Halo. Eh, How's it? I guess it's good to go. Okay. Hi, very good afternoon to all guests and members. Dr. Navamani, the Vice President. I'm not sure if Mr. Selvam is here. All our exco and council members of Kiel and Slango Indian Chamber of Commerce. Our special guest speakers from Pakeso, members of Kiel Siki. Good evening and welcome to our 30th Zoom series. Since March 2020, all of you are aware that there have been a drastic change in the way of our conduct in our business, irrespective of what businesses that we are involved in, we have to make changes in the way we handle our operation. Today, we have a beautiful session that we have planned for to assist the SMEs, the business owners, the, uh, those who are looking for a job, those who are in the training industry to benefit from our session today. Before I move on, we have housekeeping rules. Let's all follow through together so that we have a smooth session today. This talk series is being recorded and live on Kelsiki Facebook page. Please silent your handphone. Please identify yourself by rename yourself. Example, if you are a member of Kelsiki, please rename with the word M in front and your name at the back. Please mute your microphone. Please type any questions relating to this session today in the chat box. We will answer all your questions towards the end of the session. The agenda today will start uh, with myself doing the opening address and uh, we would have uh, Dr. Nava Mani to do our welcome address. So then we will move on with the speaker, Madam Gayatri. Yeah. The next we will move on to speaker two, Enchi Mohamad Shazwan. And our final speaker would be Enchi Mohamad Ada. Next, please. Next, please. Dr. Navamani is our Vice President and I would like to invite her to give the welcoming address. Dr. Nava. Thank you, Fauzia. A very good afternoon to our press, our Deputy President, uh, Mr. T. Selvam, Exco members, Council members, um, Puan Sri Fauzia, Puan Fauzia Bibi, uh, our council member for uh, corporate social responsibility as well as community development. And she's the moderator for today. Our distinguished speakers from Perkeso, Ms. Gayatri Vadivel, Inche Mohammad Sazwan bin Abdul Hadi, Inche Mohammad Adam Al Nawawi, our very distinguished guests, members, and non members of KLCK. 
It is my pleasure to officiate today's KLC Keys Zoom series, which will be our 30th chapter, mainly relating to businesses. We at KLC Key are continuously doing many town hall sessions over Zoom on various topics. We have done on strengthening your business by managing personal risk, microcredit hijra, cybersecurity, KWSP and you, hidden marketing platforms in digital world, market development grant subsidy, the challenges faced by the micro uh, and small medium enterprises, an inspirational talk, Pamule Agro Bank initiatives, disruption and evolution of event industry, Pumarkasa loan applications through BSN, SIDAC, Slango SME digitalization matching grants, Forum, Microsoft Excel skills, developing your new product brand, creating trademark, rental relief discussions, and many more. At KLC Key, we are continuously ensuring all our members and guests to be well prepared with the right knowledge in business acumen and face the challenges with strong willpower. We have many more coming up too, so do stay tuned. The pandemic and the lockdown should not stop us from excelling or thinking in new ways in moving forward. A little about KLC Key, as you can see in the slide, this uh, chambers is 93 year old and we have uh, five EXCO members and uh, 18 um, council members. And this is a trade and industry chamber, which is recognized as critical government NGO business centric liaison. We promote local and international trade and industry. We help to seek the business and trade requirements of SMEs, micro businesses and startups. We are a highly proactive as a business focused event organizer. We promote business networking sessions physically as well as virtually, especially now. We organize and facilitate business matching sessions and international business and trade delegations. We are affiliated internationally. We promote interchamber collaborations and strategic alliances. We conduct motivational series and sharing sessions by captains of industries. These are just to name a few. Most of our EXCO and council members are very dynamic in their own fields and are willing to share their expertise at all times. Today, our guest speakers will be sharing on businesses to benefit from Panjana Kerjaya Hiring Incentive 3.0, which is in other words, you can um, actually say Pemule, uh, Program Intensive Pengambilan Kerja, and also wage subsidy, which is uh, 4.0. Penjana Kerjaya hiring incentives and wage subsidies are vital, especially now because it provides the business owners some financial assistance to hold on during this pandemic. This includes the information on how we can benefit from two to six months salary subsidy and of course the application processes for it. We, the business owners, come employers, really need to know all this information so that we do not decide to close down our companies when we cannot bear the losses anymore. There are many who did that in the past. Statistics shows that at least 50,000 or more small and medium enterprises may be out of businesses with a prolonged movement control order. SME Association of Malaysia National Vice President Chin Chi Siong said in a recent press statement, about 100,000 companies have ceased operations since the first MCO. From the recent survey, only 8.6% of the SME said business is as usual, but the remaining 91.4% indicated that they will suffer losses from 25% to 100%, he told the Malaysian Reserve. So let us hear how this National Economy Recovery Plan, Punjana, will help small and medium enterprises in achieving business recovery. 
I really hope all of you will take notes on the important points. Ask your questions freely if you have any doubts and our well-versed speakers from Prakeso will answer all our queries at the end of the session. We at Kelsiki are encouraging, yeah, assisting, yeah. and enabling you to catch up using all the I was muted. <laughs> we at Kelsiki uh, are encouraging, assisting, and enabling you to catch up using all the initiatives by the government, and we are there to continue to serve the members. Over to you, Fauzia. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Nawad. That was a wonderful opening address with lots of detail in the industry with statistic. Uh, I'm sure this would be benefiting our viewers and the guests today. So let's move on. Um, the next slide, please. Today, we would have the first speaker, Madam Gayatri Vadiwil. Let me just share a brief introduction about her. Madam Gayatri was trained in Australia in the area of counseling and applied psychology following her bachelor's in business and commerce from Monash University. She holds a master in managerial psychology from Health University. She is also certified disability management professional from Nidmar, Canada. She is also holding a postgraduate diploma in counseling, ACAP Australia. The proud moment was when she was trained by the Commonwealth Rehabilitation Services of Australia. As a pioneer case manager, she has been involved in drawing the work process and modules for return to work in Perkeso, which involves the training of new case managers. Madam Gayatri currently heads the Employment Service Department and has introduced many new initiatives in the area of job placement and employment support in Sokso or Perkeso, we called it. She is also the project director for the National Employment Services Portal, My Future Job. With further ado, let's invite Madam Gayatri to share our information from Panjana Kerjaya 4.0. Oh, sorry, 3.0. The floor is yours, Gayatri. I'm sorry, Puan uh, I just received a call from Ms. Gayatri. She said she's having some um, technical issues. Okay. Uh, she said if we can move on first with uh, Mr. Adam's presentation. Denise, she like she wants us to put the slide or she wants the next speaker to go first? Uh, she's trying to get into the uh, Zoom now. She says she has some technical issues. Uh, one moment, she just in, I just admit her. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's just a technical internet issues that you're facing. Please bear with us. So Adam will go ahead, right? Um, no, Madam Gayatri said she's coming in. No, she asked the next speaker to go ahead. I'm back. Oh, okay. Ah, All right. Fantastic. All right. Oh, okay. Please proceed. Yeah. First of yeah. all, uh, apologies. I had a small technical glitch. I was here in, but uh, you know, this this technically happens during uh, you know this kind of online sessions. Apologies. And uh, first of all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Navamani, for the kind introduction, Juan Fauzia and the entire KLSCI ICCI team for inviting Pekeso for us to share on the initiatives that we have under Pekeso, and specifically uh, the Pomole initiative that was recently announced by our Honorable Prime Minister. So today you'll be hearing a couple of the incentives, which uh, includes the hiring incentives. The hiring incentives is actually broken into a couple of components. I've got my colleague here as well, Sajwan, who will be going detail into the training part. Uh, how I, I will also touch a little bit about the training aspect, but I will also include another component, which is the Kajaya gig, which is also part of the hiring incentive, which maybe not many of you are aware about, which I will be sharing for today. Yeah? Okay. Right. 
just let me put the full screen. Okay, so the hiring incentives basically it's an improvisation as some of you may be already aware, we were at 1.0 uh, way back in June 2020, and then we kicked off with uh, hiring 2.0 uh, in January, and now we're at 3.0. So the spirit of the hiring incentives, if you can see, is that uh, when the pandemic set, when the pandemic hit uh, the, the economy, especially in Malaysia, uh, Pakeso acted very swiftly, right, in introducing a couple of initiatives. We started off with the employment retention program that was designed for, you know, to assist those who were put on no paid leaves. So that's where we had an incentive provided to them. Subsequently, we moved to the uh, wage subsidy because as the economic was recovering, people was, I mean, they were going back to work and we wanted to look at sustainability of, of people in employment. So that's the wage subsidy uh, that looks into retention of uh, the workers, the existing workforce, right? So far, so far, my volume is okay, Puan Fauzia? Okay, all right, thanks. So, and, and as the wage subsidy was going along and we, said, we saw that, you know, or we expected the economy to somewhat recover, and, and that was why we started introducing the hiring incentives, which is for us to encourage employers to create job opportunities, in particular for those who have been unemployed. So, of course, we have seen, you know, we have been uh, fluctuating in terms of uh, the job creation aspect, you know, the, the economy being shut down or, or in terms of the recovery uh, phases. So, but nevertheless, with the hiring incentives, we're able to at least, uh, you know, encourage employers to, um, provide employment opportunities because we can see that how businesses actually have diversified. Previously, they may have you know, looked into one aspect or one particular sector, but because of the, the, you know, these incentives and encouragement of going digital, a lot of businesses have actually diversified. And I think with these incentives, we've enabled many employers, many employees to be employed under these incentives. And we expect uh, with this current formula, we expect to help at least 180,000 individuals to be employed under the hiring incentives, right? Okay. Let me go into the details of the hiring incentives. Some main improvisations that was introduced from 1.0, 2.0, and now we are at 3.0. So there's several improvisations from 3.0, if I can just highlight a couple of these. Uh, the first one would be the eligibility condition for employers, right? So we've introduced a slightly stricter measure. So employers may ask us why, but this is because we have to have a stricter control. We have, we have come across a couple of scenarios in which they, there could be some exploitation. We're not saying all employers, but just to have to ensure that the budget that's provided to Pekeso for us to implement is provided and given to the right uh, target market that we're looking at, that's those who are unemployed individuals. So uh, employers who are registered with SSM and other bodies, including you know, uh, ROC, ROS, SSM, or the councils, do you, they have to be registered before the 1st of June, 2021. So what happens for those employers who are not registered? I will share with you very shortly. The second one would be the minimum salary for Malaysianization. Okay, the Malaysianization is a category that was introduced to help businesses who are very much dependent on foreign workers to be able to tap on through these incentives to employ local talents for their uh, positions that they're actually looking for. And the third one would be the introduction in terms of the minimum contract period for vulnerable categories, which includes OKUs, seniors that's about 50 years old, ex-convicts included, where the contract of period previously from 12 months, we have brought it down to six months. So we hope that with this reduction in terms of the employment contract, we are able to give a lot more employment opportunities to the very much a vulnerable group, which I would say that, you know, it, it would be a tough group for us to place. But with this incentives, we hope that employers are willing to give them a try uh, with that six months contract period so that they can see for themselves that in, in fact, that this in, in this group of uh, vulnerable individuals may be able to contribute to the organization and to the economy as well. So um, some other additional criteria, the main thing employers should always be aware of is of course, who would be the persons that they can hire to be under these incentives. Um, active employees are not eligible under this because we have the wage subsidies for already active employees. So these are really to help people who are not in the job market, who are not in the labor market, or they were in the labor market, but you know, they have been re retrenched or they've been you know, downsizing and all that. They're no longer in the labor force. And this is here to help particularly those unemployed individuals uh, regardless of whether they're registered with Pekeso's EIS system, but as long as they're unemployed individuals, uh, school leavers, fresh graduates, uh, vulnerable categories, like, like I mentioned just now, OKUs, uh, single mothers included, 
And um, so if there are any of these categories that you employ, these are the people that you would you know, find eligible for the hiring incentives. Um, what about those individuals who have resigned because uh, of certain personal reasons or maybe the, the, the condition of the company itself? Yes, you can put them in on the hiring incentives as well, but they must have a two months unemployment gap before they come into the system, meaning that they must have been two months unemployed uh, if they have resigned for them to be able to come into the incentives. Also a reminder that um, these are for hiring from 15th June 2021 onwards. We understand that a lot of companies have actually put in their application under 2.0, but we also have extended it up to 7th of July where you may have put a couple of uh, you know, uh, applications in 2.0. However, from 3.0, we also still allow, although the policy was implemented on 15th July onwards, we still allow hiring from 15 June onwards because there's a transition. So as long as this hiring happened from 15 June onwards, you can apply for the hiring incentives 3.0. Principal employers to apply. So if you have outsourcing companies and so on who manage your recruitment exercises, they would not be the potential employers to apply for these hiring incentives unless they have been assigned or they have been contracted to look into the payroll and they are the ones who are actually paying the contributions for the newly hired individuals. Okay, so also a gentle reminder that companies, before you apply for the hiring incentives, remember to register the newly hired individual in the SC. So this is where sometimes some companies, when they put in the registration of that individual that they've newly hired, you'd find that hey, actually there is an active status of that employee and hence he may not be eligible because we understand during a recruitment process, not everything is divulged by the uh, candidate that you hire. So when you actually add them into the SC system, you would only find that if they have been already registered within SOCSO's contributory system, right? Um, one employee per incentives. So meaning that if they have applied for 1.0 or 2.0, they would not be eligible for 3.0 unless they are someone who's registered with EIS and they have been retrenched. For example, if they have been you know, under the hiring incentive 1.0 and you know, they've been retrenched in that process and they have sufficient contributions and they've applied through EIS in 3.0, so happen they have lost their employment and they are one of the uh, eligible candidate under the 3.0. So this, I would say, if I can just reiterate, it is one employee per incentives, one training per incentive as well. And it is an exception for those who have been under the EIS system, okay? Um, contract of service nature employment. So if it's like, you know, MLM kind of concept or uh, informal sector self-employment kind of uh, employment, then this would not be the eligibility criteria under the hiring incentives. So basically this is for contract of service nature of employment. And of course, the other one would be to register the vacancy through the My Future Jobs portal and hire the candidates that are available within the portal itself. So these are just some of the eligibility criteria that I would like to share with you. So if I can just deep dive down to the categories that we have, we have a couple of categories in each of these incentives. If I can uh, go to one of it, I mean, to, to each of it one by one to help you understand what are the, uh, the target markets and what are the incentives the quantums that we have uh, within the category. Okay, the first one would be for apprenticeship. So these are for school leavers, fresh graduates. So for example, if they're individuals who may have worked for a very short stint in McDonald's and they're still unemployed, they would also be one potential category. It could be a fresh graduate just finished you know, to uni or college and they're ready for to enter the labor market, but they would like to go for an apprenticeship first, then this would be one of the um, individuals that you may want to hire. Uh, there is a, a clear line of difference between apprenticeship and internship. So again, internships would not be allowed under these incentives. These are for apprentices that work with an employer where a contract is provided and they are working within the normal hours and they are not technically at the school uh, and um, pursuing or furthering their studies in the university or college. All right. Uh, so for this, we have two types of, um, uh, I would say, period that you can actually offer the apprenticeship period. Uh, one would be three months or six months. So if you go for the three months and you would like to hire them for three months and try them for uh, apprenticeship, uh, an incentive that will be provided by Pekeso through Impermule would be a thousand ringgit per individual per month. So which is up to three months, which means three thousand ringgit worth of incentives. But if you opt for a longer period of apprenticeship, then the incentives that will be provided would be 800 ringgit per individual per month up to six months. Yeah. So the maximum incentive an employee would be able to obtain from the apprenticeship would be 4,800 ringgit. And together with this, not just the incentives that we're providing over here, we're also providing training courses uh, up to 4,000 ringgit. And these are minimum five-day 
courses that are available within the system. So how it works is that once we approve your incentives based on the eligibility criteria, you'll be able to select a variety of courses that are available within the system for you to upskill or reskill the apprenticeship that you have hired. Yeah. So the process, uh, my colleague Shazwan will go into very detail. Right. So these are training programs that are another thing that you would have under the incentives. And the minimum salary that's required for this would be 1,200 ringgit and above. All right. Of course, we always encourage employers to always pay the, the market rate to the graduate school leavers or, or I mean, based on their positions that have been offered. Um, apart from the incentives that are provided, apart from the training program that's provided, we also provide mobility assistance to the individual that's been hired. But this is a one off in which we pay these incentives to the employer. The employer is required to disburse this mobility assistance to the employer. Yeah? So this is a one-off. As opposed to the incentives earlier, it's, it's based on either the three months or six months where the incentives is paid to the employer for you to help to pay the wages of the hired individual. The mobility assistance is also paid to you, but it is required for you to pay the uh, hired employee directly uh, together with his first salary that he's receiving. Okay, okay, so this is on the apprenticeship. I'm, I'm we are happy to, to take all the questions and answers later. So I'm now move on to the uh, below 40 category, which would be the, you know, the formal, the, the longer term of employment uh, for unemployed individuals under this incentives. So these are technically for those who are between 16 to 39 years old, anyone below 40 years old, unemployed individual. It could also be a fresh graduate as well. So maybe you've, had, you've, you've interviewed a fresh graduate and you see that uh, I don't think so, you know, I want to give him apprenticeship because I think he's good and I think I want to offer him a longer term of uh, employment and you, it could be a permanent position, it could be a contract position, but the minimum contract period that you require for this is a 12 month contract period, okay? And the incentives that's provided here is 40% of the monthly salary capped at 10,000 ringgit, yeah? So based on the salary that you declare in the vacancy and the salary that you declare in the assist portal, the salary that you actually pay the individual or you're going to pay the individual, it is at 40% of that salary, gross salary, capped at 10,000 ringgit. So the maximum incentives that an employer would receive under this category would be 4,000 ringgit, okay? Um, apart, and this is per month per individual, yeah? So there's no, um, uh, I would say there's no cap as to the number of individuals that you can actually hire, but we would also look into the, um, you know, in terms of the credibility of the company. For example, if we have a company newly set up and straight away asking for 500 individuals, we would obviously need to see uh, a little bit more on your, your documentation as your financial status, if you have a hiring plan, and if you have, you know, you have a project in place that has been awarded. So we are very happy to facilitate, but it was just want to make sure that employers do have, you know, the, the financial uh, help that, you know, in financial health wise, they are able to actually pay the salaries. We have had situations, uh, all scenarios, if I can share with you in 1.0 and 2.0, where uh, companies have applied for large numbers in which they do not, you know, they didn't end up paying the salaries to the work. And this is what we do want to, to, to foresee. So uh, we do want to have in, in, in the pipeline. So this is why we have had several measures added into 3.0 where we would request for several documentation where needed or where necessary. Okay, so um, training courses here is a little different here because um, of course training is a framework that we provide for all the incentives uh, except for Kajaya Geek. Uh, however, these are training programs that are most certification based, which is why you see the cap for this would be 7,000 ringgit. So we hope that we get to, you know, upskill them, but with a professional certification program, hence the uh, higher quantum in terms of the training cap that is allowed under hiring incentives. Um, minimum salary for this is 1,500 ringgit and above, and the term of service contract required will be 12 months and the rest is the same. So mobility assistance is a one-off and it applies for all categories. Uh, and mobility assistance yes. is 500 ringgit at minimum and 1,000 ringgit at maximum. Yeah, this is for all the categories. And this is just a one-off. So if I can move on to the next one would be after above 40. So for the above 40 category is for any unemployed individuals who are 40 years and above. And here it's a 60% of the monthly salary capped at 10,000 ringgit, which is the maximum incentive of 6,000 ringgit for the person that you've hired per month Per individual for up to six months yeah so the entire uh, below 40 above 40 quantum would be six months in total so we would pay you uh, application is only once and but we would pay you based on uh, the first month is almost an automatic approval but sus subsequent months onward we will look at the contribution that you actually pay to progress so as long as there's a contribution the payment will be done automatically uh, 30 days from the, the first payment that has been made okay so if i can move to the second 
slide on these incentives. Okay, for the next category we have would be for prolonged unemployment. Sorry, can you hear me now? You're right, so good, okay. So the next category would be a uh, prolonged unemployment and for those who with loss of employment registered with EIS. Okay, for this, we would follow this 60% uh, structure or the, the above, above 40, which I shared with you earlier, uh, because I think in terms of vulnerability and, and in terms of the candidate, the, the people that we want to target are for those who have been retrenched and, and you know they have been prolonged unemployed and not been in the labor market for a long time. So we would like to encourage employers to actually also hire this group, hence the higher rate of the incentives, which is the 60% of the monthly salary capped at 10,000 ringgit again. So structures are similar to the others. The training is in place, 7,000 ringgit worth of training programs, minimum salary required for this would be 1,500 ringgit and the mobility assistance as well. The other category that we have would be the, the introduction, I mean, I would say the improvisation that we have had this year where the vulnerable groups are concerned, where 60% is also applicable. The framework is the same, 60% yeah, uh, for each individual maximum uh, per month per individual for up to six months. Training is the same. Uh, the term of service contract is the same. Uh, I mean, sorry, the term of service contract would be the different one here where uh, like I shared with you for below 40 and for uh, you know above 40 in the other structure, it would be a 12 months contract period that's required. But however, for vulnerable groups as specified here, which includes ex-convicts, um, you know, persons with disabilities, with OKU cards, or those participating in soft social return to work program, over here you have the six months contract period that's required. Okay. Um, the last one would be the Malaysianization category. Um, this are, I think would really benefit the SMEs uh, largely because um, here we have uh, you know, positions which are very much dependent on foreign workers, where employers who actually hire local talents for these positions and take up the incentives from the Malaysianization uh, incentives, 40% of the incentives, 40% of the salary paid to the employer are kept at 10,000 ringgit goes to the employers, but to encourage the local talent to actually come forward and apply for these jobs, 20% is paid directly to the employee. Yeah? So this is like a top up to whatever you're paying them. And we hope that we can, with this, we encourage them to stay with you and to work with the organization and to also come forward, of course, to apply for the positions that are available. So what kind of positions would actually qualify for Malaysianization? What we would do is that first thing is we would look into the company. If you have previously hired uh, foreign talents for that particular position, and, and if you have, that's you know, easy for us to determine. Yes, then we will go ahead with the approval. But there are some occupations which are very much straightforward. For example, security guard, factory operators, which we, we know there's quite a number, I mean, a high dependency on foreign workers. These are all occupations that will be automatically approved for the Malaysianization program. Okay, so if I can just uh, reiterate here, 40% to the employer per month, per individual for up to six months capped at 10,000 ringgit and the 20% also capped at 10,000 ringgit paid directly to the employee. So if the salary is, uh, you know, um, in, in, in where, where when you do the calculation, you get a minimum 300 ringgit, 400 ringgit. Um, for that, it is across the board that every individual nevertheless will get a minimum of 500 ringgit and a maximum of 2,000 ringgit. So even if it's 40% and it's 3, 300 yeah. ringgit, you would actually yeah. get the 500 ringgit as a minimum to the job seeker paid directly to them. So here, when employers apply, we would definitely require additional documentations from your good selves, where for this category alone, we would ask you for the account details of the uh, individuals that you've hired under this category. The next slide. So how do you apply for this? Quite simple, okay? So you register and you advertise your vacancy on the My Future Jobs portal. Uh, My Future Jobs portal is the National Employment Services portal. It is free for all candidates, all employers, and it is really a, a portal uh, that is based on competencies and skills matching. I'll go to that in, a de in detail very shortly after I complete the incentives. But here, employers, when you register yourselves, uh, we would approve you as an employer. And then there you can go ahead and advertise your vacancy, state your position, your occupations, the number of positions that you require, and what are the type of candidates that you're looking for. And once you post your vacancies, you would get candidates applying to you or you would get match resumes based on the vacancies that you've provided. So what happens if you don't want to use my future jobs? Yes, we understand that's fine. But nevertheless, uh, if you've taken a candidate 
out of because we know some employees do have your own websites, your own portals. We respect that. And all we ask is that we register this vacancy as well on my future jobs portal and the candidate that you've hired. So why is because we are also looking in terms of the labor market as a whole. We would like to know what is the supply and demand like because the My Future Jobs portal is the portal that actually reports to the National Employment Council in terms of the supply and demand data that we have in the labor market, uh, labor market currently. So it is quite important for us to capture the vacancies that are available, what is the skills that you need, what the competencies you need for each vacancy that you actually put in, right? So once you've done the registration and the advertising and you've completed your hiring process, the next step would be for you to go into SoftSource Assist Portal. So I trust that many HR uh, uh, personnel here would definitely be familiar with our Assist Portal because that's the portal to go to when you hire somebody, uh, even if they're not in the, the incentives, but it's a statutory requirement where you add them as an employee in the SS portal, right? So these are for individuals, like I mentioned below, be earlier, it, for those that you have hired from 15 June onwards, yeah? So uh, if you have hired them before 15th of June, then these individuals would not be eligible under the hiring incentives, right? Okay, so once you've added them on the assist portal, the next day, okay, it takes a day for the information to be migrated to the Panjana Kajaya portal. The Panjana Kajaya portal is where the incentives uh, are, are, I mean, the, basically the application of the incentives are, which is www.panjanakajaya.perkeso.gov.my, where once you register yourselves as an employer for the first time, you put in your password and so on, what you need to do is you can add yourselves as an employer. Yeah, you can also add maybe uh, even two or three employers under that account because sometimes you are a HR personnel managing two or three different employer accounts. So you can do that within the portal by adding two or three employer accounts as long as you have been registered under the assist portal. And once you've already uh, you know, created your profile as an employer in the Panjana Kajaya system, what's to be done next would be that you would add the employee that you've added previously in the assist portal just by adding their IC number, and once you've done that, you select the type of incentives, either the below 40, above 40 apprentice and so on. And once you submit that, you will get the approval from us. And upon the approval, even before you pay the contribution or even before you pay, start paying the salary, we would you know, restart the process of disbursement and you already can start to apply for training programs that are available within the system. So this is basically the high level structure in terms of how you would actually apply for the incentives. Okay, so over here, this is just some screenshot. So for now, for 3.0, you would go to the red tab to create an account if you haven't, and you would therefore go into the hiring incentives where you add a new employer, you add yourselves, you, have, you would add several informations, and then this is basically the employer uh, tab where you add, uh, you know, the number of, of workers that you have, just some very small, I mean, the few information that we need from employers. And then once you've added the employee information over here, uh, we've done the approval, you will go to the training programs in which you'll be able to apply for training programs based on the sectors that we have, or the skills uh, and, and competencies that we have within the portal itself. Okay, so that's on the hiring incentives. Okay, so that is more for of the formal employment nature of uh, employment. But we also understand uh, we have uh, a lot of unemployed individuals who are keen in the informal sector as well, especially with the pandemic, we have seen the increase in the number of individuals moving from the formal to the uh, informal sector. So we have introduced this Kerjaya gig under the Pemule as an extension. It was introduced during the Pemakasa initiatives, but we have several expansions, it's still running, all right? And for all these incentives, from hiring incentives to Kerjaya gig, application deadline would be the 31st December 2021. So up to 31st December, you would be able to apply for these incentives. So now let us get back to the Kajaya gig. So for Kajaya gig is basically uh, to include eh, uh, individuals working in the gig economy or temporary jobs until they're able to get a full-time kind of employment. And basically the uh, it is for those who have been, you know, from the formal uh, sector, they've been given an unpaid leave notice uh, these are individuals that can go for the Kajai. So we know that a lot of, for example, in the aviation sector, a lot of the hoteliers, they have been put on unpaid leave notice and they have an active status of them working with a particular company. So in that meantime, we hope that with this incentives, they can actually do something, you know, something that is informal in nature and to get this incentives, which I will share with you in terms of the quantum very shortly. 
And uh, we hope that with this, they're able to be productive in the meantime, they're going back to their formal employment or their main employer. Uh, number two is also for those who have been retrenched and registered with PACESO. Uh, number three, it's also this is the extension where it also includes unemployed individuals who have been out of work for more than 180 days, right? So as long as they're unemployed and you know they've been unemployed for more than 180 days, they are another category that will be eligible. So these are to allow especially prolonged unemployed graduates or school leavers who have not been the, you know, in, 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 in the labor market and they would like to go under this, I mean, in terms of the temporary or informal sector, they are potential people under this incentives as well. They are also for those uh, vulnerable categories, which includes persons with disabilities, single mothers, um, you know, uh, any household, household or underprivileged categories registered with ECASE, right? So what can um, the uh, operator or the, um, uh, the self-employed individual get? So for operators, for these are you know, like companies or operators like Grabcar, Foodpanda, Lalamove, and so on, or even employers who are registered with Pekeso would be eligible to provide temporary uh, kind of work or temporary employment of nature to individuals who have been hired, which I just specified based on the eligibility requirements earlier, where for each successful placement, the operator or the employer who's providing this temporary employment of nature would be uh, getting 200 ringgit per individual which has been successfully employed. And for the worker themselves, those people which I mentioned just now, the retrenched workers, those who have been put on unpaid leave, they would be getting 600 ringgit a month for up to six months. Yeah, For the first month, when we verify and we do the approval, the 600 is again automatic upon confirmation. The subsequent six months, uh, the subsequent five months would require them to show us proof that they've been minimally, uh, you know, uh, active employed for, I mean, they're actively uh, doing employment for a minimum of 40 hours per week. Yeah. So as long as they are engaged in 40 hours per week or equivalent, then they are potential to get the 600 ringgit for the subsequent month. So we have an activity log in which they will have to update for us to look at the second up to the six months in terms of for the approval of the 600 ringgit worth of incentives. Okay, so for this, in terms of these steps to apply, we can look at the left column. So again, we register and advertise the vacancies on my future jobs. Yeah, so based on the matching, you hire them and then you submit the application to the Panjana Kajaya system as well, where you would look at Kajaya gig as a tab and based on the approval, uh, once you've approved them, the approver or, or the operator gets the uh, 200 ringgit incentives based on each placement and the self-employed individual will get the 600 ringgit per month and followed by the activity which I shared with you earlier. So this is on the incentives for hiring incentives and the Kajaya gig which falls under the umbrella of the hiring incentives. So don't forget to apply. If you've got any queries, I mean, feel free to, to, to have the questions, but we'll share with you the emails and some point of contact for you to uh, get further information from. So a little bit on the My Future Jobs portal, if we have time, um, Fantasia, are we on track? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, all right. So just a couple of more slides on the My Future Jobs portal. So the My Future Jobs portal, as I mentioned just now, is the National Employment Services portal as a single window portal under the Ministry of Human Resources, uh, where SOCSU is managing this portal. The, the few things that you know um, would be, uh, I would say, a niche to this portal, where it looks at competencies and skill-based matching. So what we mean by skills and competency-based matching is if I can give you a simple example, we have you know, a similar occupations where we have it in different employers, right? So if you take sandwich, a sandwich maker, for example, I, I just love to use that example. Uh, if we say a company A says a sandwich maker, uh, let, let us make his occupation sexy and say that let's call him a sandwich engineer, yeah? And another company says, let's call him a sandwich architect. But we know that as a sandwich maker, both individuals make sandwiches. They have several skill sets that's required to actually make the sandwich. They may have certain uh, cutleries that they actually need, or maybe even machine in terms of where they put their, their sandwich in and to grill them and so on. So, but these are the skill sets. What are the no main knowledge, which is the soft skills or whatever that's needed in that particular occupations. These are all listed in the uh, occupations, which is the back end, I mean, uh, available within the back end of the portal, in which when employers actually put in the, the, the name that they prefer, they will also select the occupation, which is the sandwich maker. So we all can relate to the sandwich maker itself and at the same time allow companies to call 
uh, whatever names that they would like to relate the occupation is for. Okay, so based on that skills and competencies that's available within the portal, all skill sets, competencies that are listed in the occupation that's been listed would match with the profiles that have been put in by the candidate head that has registered themselves as well. So this is one of the main thing and it's of course based on artificial intelligence. We also have a case management tool that allows us to assist not only the job seekers who are vulnerable in terms of how we should need to uh, you know, see in terms of their readiness, are they actually applying for the right jobs that they are, you know, based on their qualifications and competencies. Uh, but we're also assisting employers like your good selves who are here today, where in terms of your recruitment needs, what you need from the portal, when you register, you actually be able to see that in the portal, you will see a case worker's contact. So that case worker is there for you to assist you in your recruitment needs. And uh, not just looking at the candidates that are available for the portal, we also have our networks in which where we also help you obtain the other sets of candidates that you will need because we know that not everybody is listed in the portal. Yeah, some people are not IT savvy, some people are not actively using the portal. So we will assist you to get the talent requirements that you need. Uh, we also help you in terms of the recruitment guys. We actually do up the posters for you, do the interviews for you and manage that whole process. And guess what? We don't even charge a single cent for any of the services that we have for you. So please make use, we've got recruitment officers in all our 54 branches in, in, in Soxo in Malaysia. So please uh, do, do you know, initiate contact with them. We can share the list of names uh, to the secretariat after this uh, session in which maybe the secretary can actually share the contact details of our recruitment officers to actually help you in terms of your recruitment needs and then also assist you in terms of the hiring incentives application as well. All right, so just also in the portal, I mean, we have the application management system, which helps you track your, your applications. Uh, you can actually, you know, invite them for interviews. You can do the rescheduling, so on. So uh, plenty of, 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 you know, features and, and things that you can do within My Future Jobs. So we recommend employers to, you know, strongly use My Future Jobs and get the candidates that you need to put into your hiring incentives or the Kajai Geek program. So with that, I would like to thank you, KLT, SCI, and, and you know, to all the uh, employers who are here today and we hope that you would make full use of the initiatives that will be provided by the government in terms of your talent requirements your recruitment needs and so on all right thank you with uh, thank you SCI. thank you so much thank you madam gayatri that was a in-depth briefing on few segments from malaysianization from apprenticeship below 40 and above 40 and each of it has its own criteria so ladies and gentlemen guests please be very mindful of the criteria which you need to apply in if you clicked the wrong category then you have submitted a wrong application so there goes the opportunity so please uh, run through all the criteria whether you fulfill those criteria or you can give a call to Pakeso to clarify or you can give a call to KLCK to assist you before you submit your application thank you madam Gayatri mm -hmm. and uh, now let's move on to our second speaker Encik Mohamad Shazwan bin Abdul Hadi. Before he speak, let me just give a brief introduction about him. He is the vocational officer in the employment insurance system under the Pakeso. He holds the diploma in accountancy from Umpu Oma Polytechnic. He also holds an automotive Malaysian skills certificate under the Perdua Manufacturing Syndrome Berhad. He has a very strong experience with the Malaysian Trade Union Congress, MTUC, National Youth Chairman for three years. He was also the account assistant for 10 years in Malaysian rubber board. He also worked as a secretary general and treasurer for about eight years in Malaysian rubber board staff union. So let's welcome Encik Mohamad Shazwan bin Abdul Hadi. Encik Shazwan. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, terima kasih kepada Puan Fauzia Bibi dan uh, terima kasih juga kepada uh, KLCT untuk memberi peluang kepada saya untuk menerangkan perkenaan dengan uh, program di bawah perjalanan terjaya pada hari ini uh, yang mana uh, kita akan teruskan kepada uh, di bawah 
latihan lah. Okay. Let me saya uh, let me share the screen first. Are you able to see my screen? We can see in Jihaz Shazwan. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So for for this one, I think I will continue this one. All right. Okay. Um, first of all, program uh, latihan di bawah penjana kejaya yang kita panggil di bawah pemulih pada tahun 2021 ini merupakan, merupakan salah satu cabang di bawah hiring insentif yang mana-mana yang majikan yang telah uh, berjaya lulus uh, hiring insentif akan menerima uh, program latihan bagi pekerja-pekerja uh, di bawah syarikat mereka ini untuk meningkatkan nilai tambah bagi seseorang pekerja dan memudahkan uh, kepada majikan uh, apa ni, menguruskan pekerja-pekerja uh, tersebut lah. So, uh, of course, di bawah uh, ni, latihan ini uh, majikan secara sendirinya akan boleh buat permohonan lah. Permohonan ini hanya boleh dibuat oleh majikan tidak kepada uh, peserta itu sendiri. Jadi kita tengok permohonan latihan kerjaya uh, kerjaya tiga puluh kosong ini adalah uh, boleh dibuat mulai pada lima belas Julai dua puluh dua puluh satu lah sehingga tiga puluh satu Mac dua puluh dua puluh satu setelah menerima kelulusan permohonan insentif. Is that means uh, you tak boleh mohon latihan dulu sebelum uh, you mohon insentif pengambilan pekerja lah. Uh, jadi uh, apabila pekerja uh, telah masuk kerja, uh, uh, syarikat akan buat permohonan uh, apa ni, uh, untuk mendapatkan hiring insentif dan apabila setelah lulus maka majikan-majikan diberikan notification untuk uh, apa ni uh, untuk majikan mohon latihan kepada setiap pekerja-pekerja di bawah uh, syarikat mereka lah. Okay, majikan adalah disarankan untuk membuat permohonan program latihan ini dalam tempoh 90 hari selepas menerima kelulusan hari insentif itu sendiri. So kita galakkanlah. Tapi kalau terlepas kesi terlepas ni kita tak ada masalah mungkin ada juga antara majikan yang tidak tahu berkenaan dengan program ini. Namun kita menggalakkan majikan apabila kita dah 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 buat apa ni permohonan hari insentif apabila notification telah keluar maka apa ni majikan dah boleh buat permohonan latihan lah. Okey, majikan boleh menyemak senarai latihan ni di di laman sesawah yang saya nyatakan kat sini lah. Kat sini ada senarai penyedia latihan dan banyak lagi lah tuan-tuan perempuan semua Uh, boleh melihat kita ada lebih kurang dalam 42 bidang okay. Nanti saya ceritakan berapa banyak uh, ni, latihan yang ada di bawah kita okay. Majikan boleh memohon program latihan uh, penjana kerjaya 3.0 ni Di laman sesawang penjana kerjaya.perkeso.gov.my uh, Maksudnya uh, melalui laman sesawang yang mohon hari setiap lah Kalau mohon secara email ke kita, kita tak, tak, tak apa ni kita tak boleh proses permohonan tersebut jadi saya mohon uh, kerjasama uh, apa ni tuan-tuan puan-puan yang yang sesiapa yang menggaji pekerja ini untuk memohon untuk uh, apa ni latihan ini melalui sistem penyelenggara ya, kerja. Ya, ni mungkin ada start tadi. Kan ni betul. So uh, majikan uh, yang mengambil pekerja atau kooperatisan uh, di bawah penyelenggara kerja ini layak memohon uh, untuk pekerja menjalani latihan semula atau peningkatan kemahiran berdasarkan keperluan pekerjaan atau perusahaan berkenaan saja. Ya. Ah jadi dia dia tak boleh uh, larilah kalau ikut kan ini adalah tujuan uh, asal uh, latihan ini diberikan. Jadi kalau perusahaan itu adalah buat uh, apa ni kek, dia tidak boleh lah pergi kursus yang very technical macam uh, apa ni uh, safety and health officer. Ha, jadi jadi dia dia kena khusus kepada uh, bakery punya ni lah. Jadi uh, di sini uh, pekerja dan praktis ni yang uh, dimasukkan ni telah diterangkan oleh Puan Gayatri lah Jadi Puan Gayatri telah menerangkan pakej-pakej di bawah ni ada terlibat dengan praktisan dan juga pekerja-pekerja seperti uh, below 40, above 40 uh, dan juga uh, Malaysianization Jadi mereka-mereka uh, ni layak untuk jalan latihan Hanya khusus yang dikenal pasti disesuaikan dengan keperluan industri saja yang akan dimuluskan okay, Setiap pekerja 
yang tersenarai di bawah penjana kejaya 3.0 ni uh, layak mengikuti saku khusus sahaja uh, walaupun uh, harga khusus seperti yang dimaklumkan tadi hingga RM7,000 tapi uh, dia tengok khusus tu adalah RM4,000 you uh, ingat ada uh, baki lagi RM3,000 uh, itu tidak kita tidak buat macam tu kita akan bagi satu khusus saja cuma nilai khusus tu dia boleh Uh, dia daripada ni lah sehingga tujuh ribu ringgit lah jadi sehingga tujuh ribu ni biasanya uh, professional certificate lah yang kita tawarkan uh, dekat situ ok uh, sekiranya uh, peserta-peserta ni uh, telah menerima uh, latihan di bawah penjana kejaya 2.0 dan uh, memohon lagi latihan maksudnya dia dah berhenti kerja dah masuk di majikan yang baru dan majikan baru juga ini membuat apa ni uh, hiring insentif untuk kumpulan ini tidak layaklah sebab dia telah telah menerima apa ni latihan sebelum ini sebab uh, satu pekerja hanya ada satu khusus sahaja yang dibenarkan sepanjang di bawah uh, program uh, penjana kejaya ini okey uh, yang berikutnya uh, tiada bayaran yang dikenakan kepada majikan uh, semua yuran latihan dibayari pekeso terus kepada penyedia latihan yang telah dilantik di bawah pekeso Okay. Setakat ini kita mempunyai sebanyak 626 training provider yang telah berdaftar dengan kita Ini termasuk juga dengan uh, penyedia latihan uh, dari uh, sektor uh, dari awam uh, Maksudnya macam NIOSH, uh, CIS, ILP uh, itu di bawah awam Dan uh, training provider daripada swasta lah. uh, Setakat uh, 1 Ogos kita mempunyai uh, 7,570 khusus yang ditawarkan kepada semua uh, majikan yang mengikuti program uh, hiring insentif ni. Jadi 42 bidang ni adalah menjurus kepada bidang-bidang uh, yang berkenaan dengan sektor contoh uh, perempuan lah. Okey. Okey ini adalah flow uh, untuk uh, sesiapa yang ingin membuat permohonan apa ni uh, hiring insentif dan juga permohonan latihan. Jadi kita tengok daripada peringkat awal pekerja mencari kerja ni adalah job seeker, job seeker mencari pekerjaan dan dia akan berdaftar dengan dalam my future job dan majikan uh, mandatory mesti mempunyai uh, jawatan kosong diiklankan di uh, my future job dan uh, pekerja ni kena daftarlah untuk mengisi profile mereka dekat dalam my future job dan apabila interview telah berlaku pengambilan telah dibuat surat tawaran kerja dikeluarkan jadi tugas pertama kepada majikan adalah untuk mendaftarkan pekerja-pekerja ini di dalam portal my assist ni jadi portal assist ni merupakan satu portal caruman pekisu kita ni yang mana di situ kita kita tak perlukan lagi commitment letter jadi bila dah daftar dekat dalam my assist ni Maksudnya pekerja ini secara langsungnya telah bekerja dengan syarikat tersebut. Jadi setelah selesai berdaftar di My Assist, maka majikan perlu membuat permohonan insentif pengambilan pekerja di portal perjanjian kerjaya. Dokumen-dokumen okay. yang diperlukan ada tersenarai di dalam portal perjanjian kerjaya. Okay. Salah satunya surat tawaran kerja itu juga merupakan apa ni? diperlukan dekat dalam tu dan link uh, untuk apa ni iklan jawatan kosong tersebut uh, perlu diletakkan di dalam portal uh, penjana kerjaya so, saya saya letak flow ni uh, jadi flow my future job tu maksudnya uh, keperluan uh, tawaran pekerjaan tu mestilah uh, ada link dia dan link dia tu dimasukkan dekat dalam sistem uh, portal penjana kerjaya ni lah ok apabila uh, nak masuk tu dia akan ada juga apa ni Uh, assist, assist code uh, jadi sistem portal uh, penjana kerjaya ni secara otomatik akan baca daripada my assist ni bahawa sebenarnya pekerja ni telah masuk kerja maksudnya didaftarkan di bawah syarikat tersebut setelah itu uh, kelulusan telah dibuat oleh pihak pekiso maka majikan akan menerima notification lah yang mana uh, apa ni hiring insentif telah diluluskan dan proses pembayaran hiring insentif telah berlaku Okey, selepas daripada itu uh, majikan membuat permohonan latihan melalui portal yang sama, portal penjana kerjaya ni. 
uh, untuk pilih latihan kepada pekerja-pekerja lah okay. uh, seperti yang uh, dalam slide tu uh, perantisan uh, yuran latihan ni sehingga RM4,000 jadi khusus dia, dia apa ni, uh, sijil merupakan sijil kehadiran lah basically RM4,000 uh, uh, khusus kehadiran je lah okay. untuk kategori higher Malaysia ni dia termasuk sekali below 40, above 40 Uh, dan juga Malaysianization mereka-mereka uh, ni layak untuk memohon uh, latihan uh, sehingga rm ringgit. jadi khusus-khusus ni sijil ni biasanya sijil merupakan sijil kompetensi dan juga sijil profesional yang kita akan berikan kepada uh, pekerja-pekerja terlibat lah apabila uh, permohonan telah dibuat oleh majikan uh, seterusnya pihak uh, pekesu akan uh, mengeluarkan apa ni GL lah garanti lenta ataupun uh, dan juga borang borang uh, permohonan ni akan kita hantar terus kepada training provider yang telah dipilih oleh uh, majikan ini tadi jadi uh, selepas daripada itu training provider ini akan uh, call kepada pihak majikan uh, ataupun pekerja uh, untuk menetapkan uh, tarikh uh, untuk menjalankan latihan okey uh, berikutnya Okay, ini uh, super sedikit uh, berkenaan dengan program uh, latihan di bawah PKSU lah uh, EIS Plus uh, ini berkaitan dengan orang yang kehilangan pekerjaan lah uh, Pada masa ini, uh, apa ni, latihan di bawah EIS ni masih lagi terpakai uh, dan uh, tiada tarikh akhir uh, permohonan lah Jadi permohonan untuk EIS Plus ni kita uh, boleh layari laman sesawang kita eis.pekesu.gov.my ini untuk sesiapa yang kehilangan pekerja, uh, pekerjaan okay. uh, boleh dimohon oleh orang berinsurans sajalah maksudnya pekerja tersebut sahaja okay. penjana kerjaya 1.0 dan 2.0 ni telah telah berakhir uh, sekarang kita dah, dah uh, pergi kepada penjana kerjaya 3.0 dan permohonan uh, akhir uh, apa ni, uh, latihan ini adalah pada 31 Mac 2022 dan uh, penjana kerjaya 2.0 mana-mana syarikat yang masih uh, yang yang telah berdaftar mungkin uh, uh, saya ingin maklumkan uh, tarikh akhir permohonan latihan ini adalah pada 30 September 2021 tapi nak mohon hari insentif di bawah penjana kerjaya 2.0 ni dah dah habislah okey okey uh, seterusnya kita tengok pula uh, ni catat ahli uh, apabila uh, khusus telah telah tamatlah. Ha, jadi penyedia-penyedia latihan ini dia akan masuk dekat dalam penyana kerjaya dia akan buat apa ni permohonan uh, tuntutan yuran khusus di mana uh, dekat dalam sistem kita uh, kita meminta agar penyedia latihan ini melampirkan uh, invoice dan juga laporan akhir khusus. Di dalam laporan akhir khusus ini terdapat uh, apa ni uh, uh, senarai uh, kehadiran peserta uh, sijil-sijil uh, kepada lepas tu uh, dan dan juga uh, uh, apa ni senarai pekerja dan satu lagi uh, sinopsis ha, sebut sinopsis pun tak terkeluar sinopsis lah. maksudnya rumusan keseluruhan khusus yang telah dijalankan okey setelah daripada itu uh, penyedia latihan submit je claim unit latihan uh, akan review uh, invoice dan juga laporan akhir khusus ini setelah uh, lengkap kita akan hantar kepada bahagian kewangan untuk proses pembayaran dan bayaran uh, uh, yuran latihan ini terus kepada penyedia latihan tempoh okay, tempoh apa ni uh, apa ni tuntutan ini uh, selesai sehingga bayaran ini biasanya memakan masa sehingga 14 hari kerja lah ok uh, seterusnya kita tengok juga Ha, sesiapa nak jadi penyedia latihan ha, di bawah pekesu ha, macam mana nak jadi penyedia latihan jadi ha, ini flow saya tunjukkan ha, penyedia latihan ha, perlu ha, masuk dekat EIS portal lah. ha, kita ada dekat sini ha, link EIS portal khas untuk ha, kepada ha, training provider ha, jadi training provider akan masukkan dokumen-dokumen seperti yang ha, diperlukan ha, dalam sistem dan hantar kepada kita proses berikutnya adalah dibentangkan dekat dalam jawatankuasa latihan profesional uh, SID lah jadi jawat, 
Jawatan kuasa ni bukan terdiri daripada uh, staff dalaman kita. Dia melibatkan daripada pelbagai agensi. Jadi uh, mereka akan melihat keperluan khusus-khusus ini dan juga uh, harga yuran yang ditawarkan oleh penyedia latihan uh, adakah khusus ini relevan uh, pada industri uh, setelah daripada itu uh, mereka akan uh, luluskan uh, khusus itu kalau mana yang tak khusus kita akan maklumkan balik dan uh, penyedia latihan boleh lagi masih boleh lagi membuat permohonan balik tapi dia akan melalui uh, proses uh, apa ni uh, hanta yang kata khusus baru je lah ok uh, mesyuarat ini uh, bersidang setiap bulan ok setelah daripada kelulusan ini dibuat surat tawaran akan dikeluarkan oleh pihak pekisu kepada penyedia latihan jadi dalam pada masa sama juga kita akan sediakan surat uh, latihan ini dan juga kontrak perjanjian lah uh, antara pekisu dan juga penyedia latihan uh, setelah daripada itu khusus akan diaktifkan di dalam sistem Eh, sistem penjana kita uh, dan juga uh, apa ni, uh, sistem uh, di bawah sistem insurans pekerjaan iaitu EIS portal lah okay. kriteria dan syarat kelayakan penyedia latihan swasta okay. kita swasta je lah eh. Dia, uh, apa ni, yang awamnya uh, apa ni, kita tak, tak cerita di sini okay. uh, pendaftaran syarikat entiti mestilah berdaftar dan diperbadankan di bawah suruhan SSM lah dengan uh, mempunyai kriteria uh, apa ni, status seperti berikut lah berhad, berhad, uh, mana-mana persatuan uh, jadi persatuan yang mempunyai pusat latihan pun uh, pun boleh juga uh, berdaftar dengan kita uh, mana-mana institusi kerajaan, separuh kerajaan uh, sole proprietor, pemilikan tunggal maksudnya enterprise pun boleh juga uh, syarikat uh, liability terhad pun boleh juga tapi uh, dia ada uh, syarat-syarat yang berikutnya dia mesti mempunyai uh, infrastruktur lah uh, dia mesti kena ada premis uh, kalau tak ada premis, macam mana nak jalankan latihan uh, jadi kita perlukan premis tersebut lah jadi uh, kita perlukan juga fasiliti latihan mempunyai sekurang-kurangnya satu bilik latihan lah okay. uh, ataupun makmal komputer uh, ataupun bengkel yang dilengkapi oleh kemudahan latihan lah uh, bergantung kepada jenis khusus yang tuan-tuan perempuan tawarkan lah okay sekurang-kurangnya boleh isi 10 orang lah janganlah satu bilik tu 3 orang lepas tu nak buat nak buat apa ni nak, nak daftar dia tu susah juga lah ok mempunyai sekurang-kurangnya satu jurulatih tempatan yang tetap maksudnya mesti ada satu uh, trainer one trainer uh, attached with the company uh, with the training provider yang yang betul-betul menjalankan latihan lah ok lebih daripada itu tak ada masalah kita uh, tidak ada halangan Lepas tu, mesti mempunyai kaki tangan sokongan uh, yang mencukupi sekurang-kurangnya satu orang yang mengendalikan uh, apa ni, proses-proses uh, documentation dan juga uh, membuat tuntutan bayaran kita perlukan orang uh, apa ni, kaki tangan sokongan lah. dan uh, surat ataupun CJ kelulusan premis oleh majlis uh, berkuasa tempatan Jabatan Pemua atau Jabatan Kesihatan If they say you sewa pun tak ada masalah You kena nyatakan juga apa ni bilet itu jadi apa, apa maksudnya antara kita dengan penyewa tu kalau ada agreementnya juga pun boleh setelkan sekali mengatakan kita menyewa di premis tersebut lah ok maksudnya ok jadi penyedia latihan yang ingin berdaftar mestilah mempunyai salah satu ni bukan semua ya salah satu sekiranya penyedia latihan telah berdaftar di bawah Komunitas Semua Manusia ataupun kalau tak ada boleh berdaftar dengan bawah JPK ataupun Malaysia uh, apa ni Malaysian Qualification Accreditation uh, okey uh, MQA dan di uh, mana-mana syarikat yang berdaftar uh, apa ni institut latihan di bawah NIOSH uh, semua institut latihan di bawah Kementerian Belia dan Sukan uh, okey semua institut latihan di bawah Serim Berhad mana-mana yang berdaftar bawah sering berhak pun boleh daftar di bawah kita uh, ok, yang paling penting inilah biasa yang kita akan tengok uh, institut latihan uh, berdaftar dengan PSMB uh, ataupun kita panggil HRDF uh, mesti ada uh, yang ni dan semua institut latihan di bawah Kementerian Pendidikan uh, kita akan pertimbangkan sebenarnya tuan-tuan perempuan berdaftar uh, melalui inilah ok, kalau ada daftar 
Dia setuju dengan kita dokumen yang menyatakan uh, tuan-tuan perempuan berdaftar Dan kita akan bawa kepada jawatan kuasa kita untuk pertimbangan untuk kelulusan uh, di bawah esok lah So, uh, setakat ini, uh, ini saja yang, yang saya kongsikan berkenaan dengan program latihan uh, vocational uh, di bawah ESO uh, Fokus kepada uh, apa ni, uh, hiring insentif punya program lah di bawah penjana kerjaya 3.0 Uh, dengan itu saya serahkan semula kepada Puan Fauziah Untuk ni, uh, program selanjutnya Terima kasih Terima kasih Encik Shazwan Ladies and gentlemen Today in the first session We had Madam Gayatri Briefing us the entire process Including the category For you to secure the Six month salary subsidy On the hiring incentive now, the second session, Encik Shazwan have briefed us upon you getting the approval of the six months, that is for the employer to receive 40% or the 60%, what then the employee will get, the staff, they will be given upskilling and reskilling training under this program. And this will surely benefit uh, the employee him, themselves as well as the group of training providers who are seeking for some survival of income during this situation. And thank you, Nche Shazwan, for briefing us. Uh, for those who would like to register or to become a training provider under Perkesu, he has also shared with us how we can apply in. Please take opportunity in applying so that you can also be part of the training provider. And uh, if you'd like to have the information, we would also be able to share with you later upon completing this training. Now, let's move on to the third speaker who we have, uh, Encik Mohamad Adam. Encik Mohamad Adam will be sharing with us on the PSU 4.0. Now, I'm sure you will be wondering what is this uh, earlier hiring incentive and now PSU 4.0. These two big funding or financial assistance given by Pekeso is a wonderful package. But there has been some confusion for the business owner, especially on the criteria, which the hiring incentive is it's 100% for new hiring. But for the PSU, it's for the current staff who fulfill the criteria. And Anche Adam will be sharing with us today on what are those criteria for the PSU 4.0 and how you as business owner can apply for this. There will be a detailed sharing from him. But before that, let me just share with you a short introduction about Inche Muhammad Adam. He is the head of monitoring and development in the EIS department. He holds a Bachelor of Science on Actual Science from the University Technology Mara UITM. He also holds a diploma in actuarial science in University Technology Mara. He joined SOPSO in 2018 in the, as an employment insurance officer and is responsible as business process owner, which involved the framework, the entire framework of approval process for the national employment insurance benefit and the system. So far, there is almost 150,000 for those who have lost their job has received EIS benefit, which lead to the amount approximately, I would say 600 million in these three years. He is a person that you can seek for assistance where he has been trained with a special employment insurance with International Labor Organization, ILO, in Seoul, South Korea, in the year 2019. His extensive knowledge in employment insurance and understanding of work process is perfectly matched with his education background. Through the leadership that he has, he has successfully oversees the team on strategic and operation activities of the government's stimulus package, such as employment retention program, 
ERP and Wage Subsidy Program, WSP, which he will be sharing with us shortly. And Che Adam, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Kwan Fauzia. And I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Nawa, for invitation to uh, maybe a bit explanation about program subsidy UPA, the way subsidy program for 4.0. Uh, all right, so let me sh just share my slide first. All right, okay. So uh, I would like to present in Gui Bahasa, Bahasa Melayu and English, maybe uh, a bit for easier for me to explain because some of the category is easier to explain in Malay and uh, regular English, but I will try to talk in English most of the time. All right. So uh, just a waste subsidy program is actually a well-known uh, program set by the government. We're actually not just now, but as you can see here, it's about 4.0. So there okay, must be a 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. We was introduced by the government on the first time uh, last year, March uh, 2020. It was at the first of pandemic, uh, COVID-19 was introduced, and then there's an initiative by the government called Play Hacking. All right. So the Play Hacking uh, announced that the Waste Subsidy Program 1.0 gets a different category in terms of small, medium, and large enterprise. So when you talk about sizes at the time, you have a different kind of uh, benefit. And then they will move into 2.0, which is on September, October, and December, October, November, and December for PSU 2.0. And another one we have on January this year, we have 3.0, and it was ended on uh, what July 2021. So, What's the difference between 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0? I will explain a little bit uh, about 4.0. And then, if you can see here, in, in PSU, Program Sasigi Ukwa, it's actually have the same requirement, but I, I just want to highlight a gentle reminder for all the existing who have applied for Waste Subsidy Program 1.0 and 3.0, they must apply back into PSU 4.0. All right? So from here, I will talk about uh, the introduction, overview, and waste subsidy 4.0, the terms and conditions, and do's and don'ts. And lastly, we will have a Q&A session. All right. OK. Uh, I think Juan Fauzia have a good point, saying that uh, the hiring incentive is about for new hiring, which is uh, after 15th of June. If there is a new hiring, you can apply for with hiring incentive incentive. So when you talk about waste subsidy, it's not about new hiring, it's about to retain your existing employee. So when you talk about uh, retain existing employee, it must be registered before the program start. Okay. Let's say you have around five people at the moment. So you can we want you to retain five workers until the end of the pandemic, if possible, and we want to ease the burden in terms of gas salary. Okay. So the main objective for waste subsidy program is, of course, yeah. You know, when you talk, we in terms of financial, we will give uh, salary for the worker. Is one of it, not all of it, but a part of it. So when you, when waste subsidy was introduced is is mainly focused on the waste, uh, the salary of the worker paid by the employer. So the case two, sebenarnya yang paling penting adalah pekerja di luar sana, your employee must understand that their salary a part of waste subsidy program. Sebagian daripada gaji dia adalah dibayar oleh waste subsidy. Let's say, for example, the worker have around 2,000 salary. So when you, when you have the 2,000 salary, 600 is from the waste subsidy, and 1,004 is, is from the employer itself. Okay, that is why they call the waste subsidy. Another one is, of course, when you talk about to retain the employee, we want to reduce the employment rate in Malaysia, 
we don't want the high volume or loss of employment happen during the pandemic time. As you can see, last year, actually, we received about 107,000 people who, who apply for with, uh, who apply for the EIS benefit, which is have lost their job. For this year, uh, for now, only for 40,000 people have applied for EIS benefit rather than last year. Last year is quite a lot, but this year, uh, the economy is not that good because 2019 we received for one whole year we received about 40,000 and now until July we received about 40,000 so it was already more than 2019 but it was less than 2020 all right so it is relevant for the way subsidy could be introduced so that we want to reduce the loss of employment happen in Malaysia during the COVID Okay, how do you want? The overview process is PSU, you can do an application now uh, for waste subsidy program 4.0 at prehacking.pakeso.gov.my and over there you can choose the waste subsidy program PSU and then you can submit your application. The main thing that I will tell you on how to make an application and I hope uh, a lot of you have not made an application yet because from here I will tell you how to make an application and another thing, after you make your application, what will happen uh, to your application and what do you have to do post application, all right? So when you talk about when you want to apply for waste subsidy program, it's actually there is about four points that you need to remember. The first one, I will tell you later on and until the so on, all right? So the second one, once you have submit your application, we will process it only in HQ, which is SIP in HQ. And then we will, we, will include, we will look into the criteria of waste subsidy program. If they have made, then we will show it to the disbursement part. Okay. Okay. PSU 4.0. The allocation is about 3.8 billion, and our target is about 2.5 million workers. The employer, the employer here is about 250,000 which is on the first waste subsidy program, PSU 1.0, we receive about 331,000 application from the employer. The amount of worker is about 2.7 million worker that have applied for waste subsidy program 1.0. And for the second one and the third one, actually we have combined, the second one is about 96,000 people have applied. For the third one, about 180,000 application have applied for waste subsidy program 3.0. And as it now, if you look into our waste subsidy 1.0, we have received about 35,000 applications. So there's a lot of application received for, from our end and we will have to process it. And I will tell you on how for you to get a fast approval from our side, okay? So if you are listening to my slide, hopefully, I, hopefully I will tell you how uh, if you make the right application, then it will be easier for us to approve as soon as possible, okay? So the first thing that you want to talk about waste subsidy program is, of course, there is no gap uh, cap for wages. Dulu ada PSU 1.0 sehingga 3.0, gaji dia cap RM4,000. For now, there is no cap. So the person who have more than 4,000, let's say 5,000, 6,000, or even 10,000 can apply for waste subsidy program. You can add it inside your list to claim for waste subsidy program. But it is have a limit of 500 workers here, okay? So another one here, the main priority that the government has set is of course, you must have the written notification to your employee. Why? Because we want to make sure a lot of people, well, actually we receive a lot of complaints from the employee side saying the, saying the employer have not paid for the wages in terms of waste subsidy. But we, most of the complaint that we receive is actually is not true. Most Because 80% of the complaint, actually the worker does not understand the way the waste subsidy process. Okay, the process is actually the way subsidy is a part of their salary. The orang banyak fikir kalau dapat way subsidy program ni, dia ada adalah tambahan daripada gaji mereka. Sebagai contoh, kalau dia terima dua ribu, dia akan dapat dua ribu enam. Kalau dia gaji dia tiga ribu, dia akan dapat tiga ribu enam. 
So when we receive a call about GAT, when we when we talk to them about how the sewage subsidy works, baru lagi orang faham. So actually, yang gaji yang majikan bayar tu dah termasuk dengan sewage subsidy program. So how do you want to make their understanding? And of course, the government said that we need to put a written notification inside the payslip. It's one of the way for them to understand. Another way to understand is, of course, not only the post payslip, but also, let's say, if you want to do a memorandum or internally, also can. Okay. Uh, or an official email to all of your staff. Boleh juga, tak ada masalah. Not only for payslip, this is either memo or official email or you put on your notice board. It can be a, as long as it is written and printed so that if we come back to you, you can show it to us. The gate have you sent it to all your employee and then we will continue to pay. This is uh, compulsory for you to do it. Okay. So, tempo. Tempohnya adalah pada dua bulan yang pertama bagi semua sektor fasa dua plan pemulihan negara, negara our nation recovery plan not only for fasa dua actually fasa dua is just a saying that you can apply even though we are in Kislango KL we are in fasa satu tetapi as long as fasa satu fasa dua you can apply you can apply for waste subsidy program 4.0 semua boleh apply jangan risau Dan ia adalah untuk semua sektor untuk sehingga fasa kedua. Sehingga fasa kedua lah. Maksudnya fasa pertama, fasa kedua, semua sektor boleh apply. But once dia ada dalam fasa ketiga, which is not announced yet by the government, dua bulan additional ini adalah nanti kita kena tunggu dulu dalam government announce fasa tiga and dia kena specifically tell you on what is the negative sector. Okay, so now priority Lee, when you apply for waste subsidy program, it will show two months first. It will not show an additional two months. Okay, so how will it work? Dalam poker nanti, ia akan kunjuk dua bulan. And later on, when the government announced the negative sector, again, from that, you just not need to make a new application, but we will, we will automatically add it to your application. Nanti jadi bila government announce fasa ketiga and apa itu sengara negatif bila tengok balik dalam poker PSU dia akan jadi empat bulan kalau you are one of the negative sector okay? kalau you bukan daripada negative sector dia akan lagi dua bulan sahaja alright so kita tunggu dulu apa kerajaan announce on negative sector untuk sementara waktu ni kalau kami pun sebenarnya memang kami tak tahu kalau ramai orang ke di luar sana memang ada yang tanya kami apa ikut kesengarannya tadi selalunya saya akan jawab tunggu dulu government punya announcement ataupun from from dia saying of the SOP sekarang ni negative sector adalah fokus kepada aktiviti keramaian so aktiviti keramaian can be a lot of thing okay Alright, so bantuan kewangan. Jumlah bantuan adalah RM600 bagi setiap pekerja, RM600. So RM600, the maximum is RM500. Your per month, your company can get around 300000 if you have 500 and or more. Okay, the maximum RM300,000 sebulan. Get is sebulan. So if you are eligible for two months, you will be able to get around 600000 if you are eligible for four months, get is a 1.2 million that you will ever to receive the waste subsidy program. It depends on how you want to claim. It depends on the criteria set by the waste subsidy program. Okay. So here, in Agla Kari Pomongan, which is 1st of August, last Sunday, and the 31st of October. All right. So I understand a good few of you got applied for waste subsidy program before this. PSU 1.0 ke 2.0 ke 3.0. Tak kisah. Salah satu pun tak apa. You boleh script go to waste subsidy program 4.0. Ataupun you ikut urukan 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. You can apply for waste subsidy 4.0. Kalau you hanya ada satu pun kosong sahaja. You can go script to 4.0. Dia tak ada ikut urukan. It's based on the application gate set by the government. Okay. 
So let's say, uh, actually, if if you are not yet receive a full payment from the latest waste subsidy program from the previous waste subsidy program, let's say you are from the tourism tourism sector. Tourism sector is very special sector which we know that a lot of them has suffered during the pandemic time. So, kerajaan memang put an effort dekat situ, ia bagi tourism sector ni lebih bulan. So, lebih bulan, let's say sekarang ni kalau ikutkan, permohonan dia adalah 7 bulan bagi PSU 3.0. Jadi, kalau 3.0, ya, kalau dia baru sahaja apply Julai, so 3.0 nya akan tamat pada Julai, Ogos, September, Oktober, November, Disember, Januari. Okay, get if the tourism sector apply on July, it will end it on January for waste subsidy program 3.0. Okay, untuk 4.0 walaupun ia kena walaupun ia habis apabila Januari nanti, tetapi dia masih kalau sekiranya dia nak 4.0 ini, dia have to apply during this duration. Okay, dia kena wait until Januari baru nak apply. They have to apply now until the first of October. Then, kat situ, dia akan sambungan adalah February and March. Maknanya 4.0 dia akan dapat apabila 3.0 telah tamat bayar. Alright? So, pembayaran with subsidy program 4.0 will start once your 3.0 finish. But, kalau tak habis lagi, Again, you have to wait lah. That's why it will start after finish lah. Alright. So, dengan uh, faham konsep dekat situ, walaupun application now, the payment will be later depends on your waste subsidy previously. Alright. So, just uh, just like I mentioned to you, uh, 600 per month per, per worker and the maximum that you can apply is 500 worker bagi setiap pemohonan. And you need, uh, you only need to apply once now, and on the second month you don't need to apply again. I uh, will tell you what you need to do after your application. Okay. So, kira-kira hak gaji pekerja berbanding dengan program sebelum ini, before this 4,000, sekarang tidak ada limit. You, you can apply even though your employee have a salary of 5,000 or even 10,000. Okay. Another one is the compulsory one that you need to put on the written notification inside their sleep, pay sleep, or you can show that your company is one of the receiver of the waste subsidy program. Salah satu lah dalam pay sleep. Nanti saya akan bagi contoh lah lepas ni. Macam mana ni nak dekat waste subsidy program ni dalam pay sleep ataupun written notification. Okay, the terms and condition. Alright, just like I mentioned to you just now, two months first for all sector, for fasa kedua, fasa kedua when you are in fasa pertama pun boleh apply, fasa kedua pun boleh apply. Tetapi untuk additional two months is only for the negative sector on fasa ketiga which the government will announce later and the main priority one is majikan perlu mengalami perurungan hasil sekurang-kurangnya 30%. So 30% ini bagaimana for you to make a declaration into our system, I will tell you later on. Okay, but the main thing here is for you to not share your document with us. Tak perlu share pun document, you just not need to share your income statement. You just not need to share your plan statement with us. You only need to declare inside our system, which in the form for application in your form. Alright. So, another one is criteria telah berdaftar atau mencarung dengan pekesur sebelum 1 Jun. Apa masuk sebelum 1 Jun ini adalah yang pertama, the first criteria that we look into is of course the employer. Whether or not the employer have registered with SOSO before 1st of June. Okay, so the first criteria when we want to approve the case, jika kita tengok nama majikan tu, jika kita tengok kod majikan tu, kod majikan tu yang kod yang bergaftar dengan pekesu. Dengan kod bergaftar dengan pekesu tu, jika kita tengok balik bila yang bergaftar. So, kalau dia bergaftar before 1st of June, then it should be okay for us to proceed into the next step. Tetapi kalau after 1st of June, 
let's say you register with us with your employer you register with us second of june or first of june then we will reject the application terus okay bila reject application tu dia akan terus kita tak akan semak pekerja ke apa semua tu alright so when after the employer is of course kita akan tengok employee pula so you have kat situ sengarai pekerja yang you claim let's say you claim for five people dengan five people tu we will check every single one of them whether or not the person have registered with so-so first before first of june okay apa masuk pekerja ni berdaftar first of june because a lot of company out there misunderstand about this criteria But, sebab saya ada terima call yang berkaitan sekiranya pekerja ni memang betul pekerja ni dah berdaftar before first of june tetapi dia berdaftar dengan majikan lain dia dah kerja 10 tahun dia dah berdaftar dengan pekerja 10 tahun yang lepas dan sekarang caruman dia memang cangkit dia baru masuk dekat kampung saya takutnya memang tidak boleh cannot be like that you need to understand that the objective of waste subsidy program is for you to retain the existing uh, employee not for the new hiring okay so when you talk about existing employee dia kena berdaftar dengan your company not with other company of course dia dah berdaftar dengan other company masa dia pernah kerja dulu tetapi they have to register with your company dekat so so before first of june yang itu yang first okay the second one is actually for you to understand let's say Uh, yang ini lagi senang untuk kalau bagi contoh let's say if the person have report duty with your company on January let's say January and then uh, suddenly you found that you, that you need to register with so so then you go to so so on August sekarang sekarang baru pergi on August you cakap yang orang ini adalah pernah beke, uh, segam bekerja dengan saya sejak Januari So pegawai sok-sok selalunya dia akan beritahu yang bahawa oh, sebenarnya pekerja ini perlu berdaftar 1 Januari. So sekarang ni dah August, so you have to pay their contribution starting from Januari. Meaning that you have to pay back their contribution starting from Januari until August. So kat situ you pun bayar 1 sampai lah 8. Tetapi bila when you apply for waste subsidy program you are not eligible to receive for get employee why because we look into the system on when did you come to so so to register this employee maknanya kalau you datang bulan 8 memang tak layak right so yang itulah maknanya ada yang few memang dia bayar caruman daripada bulan 1 bulan 8 tetapi eh, pembayaran itu bulan 8 jadi dia tidak layak untuk waste subsidy program okay So uh, yang tu lah yang kedua-dua rule yang amat penting sekali. Yang ketiga adalah telah berdaftar dengan SSN before 1st of June. So the new business which was registered after 1st of June is not eligible. So ada kriteria kat sini adalah 1st of June kita akan tengok in terms of registration with SSN and then we look into the 50% and then another one we look into the registration with SOSO. Okay? yang itu get is our process for approval so what you need to do is of course in terms of SSM it can be straightforward when you look into your SSM of course it was registered before 1st of June okay on the second part is when you do an application you must be careful to declare your 30% and the third part here is actually for you to check first in your contribution punya portal which is our portal, portal basis I think a lot of HR are familiar with this portal because every month you need to pay contribution for your all your employee which is okay so which is before 15 of every month so sebelum 15 masuk dulu ke dalam portal let's say check dulu sengarai pekerja tu whether or not it was update ke or not kalau tak update please update the list of your employee Let's say that you have, you used to have 10 people inside your company. Now two of them have resigned. So you only have eight. Dalam poker tu bila you masuk, you tengok, oh ada lagi 10 orang. Jadi dengan 10 orang tu, you upgrade je lah. Yang dua orang tu sudah resign. Bila? Bila dia resign, you put on the resignation gate. And then kat situ memang ada lapan. So it's easier for us to clarify. It's easier for us to 
make a decision to approve the case, lakuan orang. So, daripada lakuan orang tu, you know that lakuan orang ni ada dalam company you now. So, you have to check it first on the every single one of them register before 1st of June in your company or not. You tengok, sama ada company you dah gafka belum pekerja ni, kalau dah gaf, gafka, okay. Tetapi kalau belum, so kalau belum ikut uh, masa application waste subsidi program ada Excel yang kami akan bagi. Karena Excel itu sebenarnya apa yang kami nak for you to insert all that you want to claim. Claim sahaja. Jangan bubuh semua pekerja you lekat yang mana you nak claim sahaja. Jadi sebagai contohnya lapan tadi, if you check only six was registered before first of June, so masukkan enam sahaja. Lagi dua memang you tahu memang tak layak. Okay. Dekat situ yang paling penting. And then another one is of course dekat application form tu dia ada satu fail. Nanti saya akan tunjuk sikit macam mana nak buat permohonan. Dia akan tunjuk siku adalah jumlah pekerja yang dituntut. Jumlah pekerja yang dituntut itu adalah uh, bermaksud on how many that you want to claim. Let's say just now that I mentioned only enam orang je dalam Excel. Then you put get six. Dia mestilah sama dengan apa yang ada dalam Excel tersebut. Sengarai. Case uh, your employee list of claim. Okay. Kalau dalam Excel ku ada enam orang, you letak kat field ku enam orang. Kalau dalam Excel ku ada sepuluh orang, you letak kat situ sepuluh orang. Or else, kalau you letak different number, it does not match, then we are not sure whether or not you want the uh, the one that you put into the field or you want the one that you put inside the Excel list. Okay, so kat situ lah yang agak susah untuk kami luluskan. Alright, and lastly, of course, after you make an application, you must, you must retain your employee. Eh? Inside your list, the one that you provide to us in Excel sheet, yang itu you have to retain them during the during the way subsidy program. Okay, so dengan sebagai contoh, kalau you apply now, and you put inside the Excel ada lima orang, you have to retain them. Kena kekalkan su semua pekerja. Lima-lima ni kena kekalkan dalam period of the way subsidy program. Let's say kalau you apply bulan lapan, patutnya kalau dua bulan adalah bulan lapan dan bulan sembilan. Okay, so for this two month, you have to retain this worker. Lima orang tu you kena retain selama dua bulan. So kalau sebagai contoh, the government announce uh, a sec what is the negative sector, what are the negative sector. Suddenly you found that you get you are one of the negative sector, then you are eligible for engaging in two months. So you can kekalkan untuk empat bulan. Yaitu August, September, October and November. Alright. So empat bulan ni memang kena kekalkan. Alright. Okay, yang tiga layak. Yang tiga layak, the one, okay. Yang tiga layak mestilah pekerja yang majikan dan pekerja yang belum berdaftar atau mencarung dengan pekerja selepas satu Jun. Yang ni, yang memang the one I have showed to you for those who are eligible, memang kontra lah. The opposite. Okay, same goes to the SSM. Must register uh, selepas satu Jun, tiga layak. And then this is uh, majikan yang belum berdaftar dengan LHGN. Okay, for LHGN, it's of course the main priority that you before you submit it to us your application, you must have your income tax number for your employer. Okay, with your employer, you need to have your income tax number. Okay, kalau tak agak lagi, you can go to the LHGN and you can register yourself and you can get the income tax number. Once you get the income tax number, barulah apply to waste subsidy program. Okay, selagi tak agak nombor tu, memang tak boleh buat apply. And this is the mandatory part which we cannot tolerate. Ia adalah disetkan oleh government. Kalau memang tak agak tu, uh, from our so, so view, our from our end, memang tak boleh buat apa. Memang syarat ni ditetapkan oleh kerajaan dan kami hanyalah pelaksanaan. So, we are the implementation. We just not set the rule. Okay. So, pekerja yang diberhentikan kerja, yang ini pun amat penting untuk faham konsep diberhentikan kerja adalah pekerja yang resign, adalah pekerja yang misconduct, 
adalah pekerja yang expired contract tempoh contract yang tamat ataupun adalah pekerja yang poor performance diberhentikan maknanya pekerja ni berhenti pada bulan itu okay. pada bulan itu sebenarnya sebagai contoh kalau pekerja itu berhenti pada 20 hari bulan 8 okay. so bila dia berhenti 20 hari bulan 8 should be you are eligible for wage subsidy program on that month kenapa? sebab selama satu hari bulan sampai 20 hari bulan you already paid their salary so if in the event of you are already you have paid the salary to the worker walaupun dia kat kamat you kat bayar dia sampai 30 hari ataupun you bayar sampai 15 hari sahaja depend on the resignation date dia so you are still eligible for waste subsidy program okay you will and waste subsidy program dia kat ada partial eh dia kat ada partial dia kat ada correct dia kat ada dia hanya bayar dengan ratus ringgit okay so dengan itu kalau dia bekerja dia diberhentikan on that month you are still eligible for waste subsidy program on the second month which is dia dah tak ada you need to update to us get the person have resigned you need to update your employee list so you kena kurangkan before this ada 5 bulan depan you kena claim 4 sahaja ok dengan 4 pula dia akan bayar 4 orang dia akan bayar 5 orang in case of anything happen kalau we, we are still paying 5 people so dia akan jadi lebihan bayaran excess of payment ok so the next one pekerja yang sedang digajikan di bawah program insentif pejaya kejaya this is kewangiskan the hiring insentif siapa yang apply for hiring insentif 2.0 and dia tak habis lagi dia tak boleh pekerja ku tak boleh lekat dalam sengarai PSU ok same goes to the hiring insentif kalau dia digajikan bawah wage subsidy program dia tak boleh dapat hiring insentif ok so dengan logiknya dekat situ sebagai contoh sedang eh? if you look into the word is sedang meaning kalau telah boleh ok let's say if 2.0 year habis on June so on June you still have a salary that you need to pay for the worker so on July and August PSU 4.0 muncul so you can put the one who have been given by the hiring incentive yang digajikan bawah hiring incentive dah tamat pada June on August you can put the name inside the waste subsidy program ok dia akan sambung lah dia akan dapat 6 bulan hiring incentive dia dapat 2 bulan PSU ataupun there's a possibility that we get a 4 months of benefit 4 months of waste subsidy program yang akan sambung ok the main thing is dia tak boleh dapat dua-dua dalam satu masa on the same time alright and of course the pekerja sektor awam bagian mekanu persekutuan dan negeri semua bagian mekanu yang diasingkan saraan PPT dan mereka bekerja sendiri tidak mempunyai majikan adalah tidak layak Okay, dengan pekerja sendiri ni, you have to understand the concept of employer. The concept of employer that you must have one or more employee inside your company. Okay, when you have one or more company, barulah you start mencarum, you start contribute for so so. Okay, kalau you tak ada pekerja, meaning that you are self-employed, you bukan sebagai employer to so so. Okay, that's why kat sini, Benefit ni hanyalah untuk pekerja. Jadinya maksud dekat sini adalah pemilik tak boleh claim untuk waste subsidy program. Dan pemilik tidak perlu mencarung kepada pekeso. Okay. Kecuali kalau sebagai contohnya saya selalu dapat soalan karakter. Okay. Karakter we have two category. The first one is of course some of the karakter ada fee karakter. Kalau setiap bulan dia dapat fee director sahaja, dia tidak perlu mencarum kepada pekeso, dia tidak boleh mendapat waste subsidy program. Okey? Tetapi kalau dia digajikan, kalau dia digaji setiap bulan memang ada gaji, ada gross salary, ada net salary, kan? Dekat situ dia adalah dikategorikan sebagai employee. So, they have to contribute to so-so and they will able to get waste subsidy program untuk karakter. Alright. So kena faham konsep yang di mana pemilik memang tidak perlu mencarung dan pemilik tidak layak untuk waste subsidy program. 
Alright. So another one here is pekerja asing, foreign worker and expatriate pegawai gagang is not eligible for wage subsidy program. Wage subsidy program is only for local employee. Okay. So pekerja asing, jangan dalam Excel tu jangan lekat pula pekerja asing. Dia lekat hanyalah uh, local punya pekerja. Alright. And lastly, majikan yang menarik diri Okay, meaning you have cancel your waste subsidy program after we approve then you are not eligible for come back to us to reactive your waste subsidy program okay once the case have approved you must go on until the end kalau you berhenti sekerat jalan jika boleh datang balik untuk reactive your application all right so the do and don'ts the do of course Kemas kini maklumat pekerja melalui Focal Assist Perkeso. Pergi kat dalam Focal Assist. Make sure that your employee list is updated. Okay. Yang kekini. So dengan list ku, pastikan dia adalah yang kekini. Kalau ada 10 orang, 10 orang sahaja yang takut ada dalam list employee you inside our Focal Assist. Okay. Kalau ada 5 orang, then you need to make sure that ada 5 orang dalam Focal Assist sahaja. Alright. So dengan lima orang tu pastikan if you want to claim for waste subsidy program you need to check when get the person register with your company dekat sok sok okey dengan lima orang sebagai contoh tiga orang sahaja yang 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 register before 1st of June kan you boleh masukkan dalam waste subsidy program punya application if there is lima orang yang register before 1st of June then all of your employee can go into the way subsidy program in your application. Okay? And make sure maklumat yang diberi adalah betul dan tepat. Okay? Your bank account, your BRN, your registration BRN, your business registration number is quite important for the new employer. For the existing employer, jika dah ada info ku, should be no problem for us to bayar dekat you. Sebab sebelum ni dah success payment. Only for the new employer, Pastikan yang ini adalah tepat. Sebab if anything happen, if the ID does not match with your bank account, then the bank will be will reject your application. Jadi kita kena dapat balik information tu. Okay. So another one is of course your declaration. Declaration tu saya skill dapat permohonan daripada majikan yang di mana dia pilih bulan yang sama. Kita pun nanti saya akan kerangkan lah dia bulan. Alright. So the third one, maklumat permohonan dan dokumen yang dikemukakan mestilah lengkap. Meaning that all the dokumen yang diminta dalam portal and all the information that you need to fill up must be complete. Okay. Kalau tak complete, then it's hard for us to approve. It will take some time. We need to call you to ask for the information. Okay. And of course, yang ni lah yang the second one. Once you have submitted to us your application, what will you have to do? Make sure on the second month, kalau ada perubahan, macam the one I mentioned, kalau ada pekerja berhenti pada bulan yang sebelum tu, bulan, bulan yang sekeduskan mesti kena update. Supaya tak ada lebihan bayaran. Okay, sekiranya berlaku lebihan bayaran, we have to claim it back. Okay, okay so perlu untuk balik dekat majikan anda. Okay. Pastikan every month kalau ada changes towards your status of operation or employee list, update dekat dalam portal. Kalau tambah ke new hiring, tak perlu. Eh? Kalau ke new hiring, tak perlu update. Only update orang itu kalau orang itu layak sahaja. Okay? So let's say your, let's say it can be at additional next month. Of course, ada beberapa senario. Sebagai contohnya, uh, of course, logically, kalau you the first month you have submit lima orang, on the second month, it must be reducing. Because why? Uh, salah satu maybe dah berhenti ke apa kan. So, it should be four or three or two or one. It depends on your company punya uh, macam mana update list tu. Jadi, supposedly memang dia tak banyak naik ia banyak turun sahaja. Tetapi boleh juga ada senario naik. Sebagai contohnya kalau hiring incentive tadi before this dia dia kena digajikan bawah hiring incentive. Ya, eh? 
Jadi bila dia digajikan bawah higher incentive, dia tamat pada August, let's say. Let's say it's August, it's angered higher incentive. On September, you want to pull it inside the waste subsidy program. Boleh, tak ada masalah. You masukkan, you tambah orang. Tetapi make sure that tu orang ini adalah berdaftar sebelum 1 Jun 2021. Okay? Alright, so on the second month, it can be additional employee or it can be reducing employee. Okay, most of the time is reducing employee. Susah kalau nak naik. Okay, understand that you cannot put a new hiring. Contoh, you baru hire orang tu pada September, you masukkan list dalam PSU, nama dia. Supposedly, dia tak layak sebab dia, dia, dia baru lapu diri bulan 9. Okay? So, get this employee list update dalam the second month. Alright. Then lastly, of course, mengekalkan semua pekerja yang kesengarai dalam pembohongan. Okay. During your time with PSU, on the second month, kalau you are eligible for two months, you need to retain your employee for two months. If you are eligible for four months, you need to retain your employee for four months. Okay. As simple as that. When do you want to start to retain your employee? Of course, starting from the application gate. Maknanya, once you register with so, so eh, once you register with waste subsidy program, starting from the application gate until the end of the program, which is on possibility on September or possibility end, uh, end of November. So, from that kind, you need to retain it. Okay? So, yang tiga patut, Jones, sengarakan semua pekerja dalam pembangunan subsidi, termasuk yang tiga layak. Jangan masukkan semua, masukkan yang mana yang layak sahaja and then you will get fast approval. Okay. Memasukkan akan kemukakan maklumat yang salah, tiga muat naik dokumen yang diminta, incomplete application yang ini akan mengganggukan proses dan tiga mengemas kini perubahan skater operasi perniagaan dan sengarai pekerja. Okay. So yang inilah please go elakkan, elakkanlah daripada kejagi untuk memudahkan proses buat subsidi program untuk juga dapat cepat duit itu. Alright. So yang ini adalah muka berdepan our home page from here. Please go go here to for your application. Go to here permohonan buat subsidi program. Eh? All of you for uh, all of the existing uh, waste subsidi program receiver or for new for new buat subsidi program, please go to permohonan subsidi upah 4.0. Okay, jangan pergi sini. Sini hanya untuk kemas kini sahaja on the second month. If in case of you want to update on the second month or third month, then you go to kemas kini. Alright, kat kemas kini lah akan ada information get for you to update your list. Tetapi mengikut kat update lah sepanjang masa, dia hanya muncul pada satu hari bulan sampai 15 hari bulan setiap bulan. Okay, so after 15 hari bulan, let's say you want to update your list, you masuk dekat sini, you masuk your reference number and your register email, then you are, then you search for the update list, uh, update employee list, kemas kini sengarai pekerja, memang tak ada. Eh, starting from 16 until 30 lah, memang tak ada untuk kemas kini. Dia hanya ada on the second month, pada satu hari bulan sampai 15 hari bulan sahaja. Apa tu. Tetapi apa yang you akan nampak adalah, bila you kemas kini, you akan nampak yang uh, untuk kemas kini sektor ataupun ya kemas kini perlindungan hasil if you declare the first time kesalah mistakenly declare your perlindungan hasil then you can go to kemas kini you can click on kemas kini perlindungan hasil tu you can declare back the 30% ok tetapi yang declare for you to update your sektor and for you to update the perlindungan hasil mengikut adalah hanya sekali sahaja. Maknanya once you dah put the information inside kemas kini ni, you tak boleh uh, kemas kini balik. Untuk sektor dan perlindungan hasil. Untuk sengarai pekerja, ia hanya muncul bagi satu hari bulan sampai lima belas hari bulan. Okay? Same goes to pembakalan. If you want to bakal, untuk pembangunan pertama boleh juga you can go to bakal and uh, untuk the second month, ia akan muncul pada 1 hingga 15 hari bulan. For you to semak your stakers, for you to check your stakers, you can go here. Alright? If you want to read our FAQ over here, if you want to see the manual, 
uh, manual guide into our system, you can go here. Okay, how do you want to clear 30%? It's very simple. The first thing that you need to remember is, of course, you need to have the 30% losses. All right. Uh, I'm not saying that you're supposed to have 30%, but I'm hoping that you are uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, in terms of waste subsidy program, you must show the 30% or more. Okay, 30% or more. All right. The first thing that you, you need to look into is, of course, on the first month of comparison, you need to have a base of 2021. Okay. On the second month of comparison, you need you can choose any month of the year 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay. So let's say here on the first month, you need to choose. Okay, I saya akan tunjuk lah on the uh, pokal dia macam mana, okay? So, on the first one here, the year 2021, you can choose any month from January until July. You can choose, let's say you are choosing January here. So, on the second month, you can choose any other month starting from 2019 until 2021. Let's say you already choose January over here. You can choose here December 2020. Uh, December 2020. Okay, you can even choose May 2020, or the latest that you can choose is January 2019. Okay, jangan lekat sini January 2021, and then you put here February 2021. Tak boleh lah. It must be before. Your base is of course is 2021 January. Then yang ini adalah bila-bila masa sebelum dia. Must be before. Jangan lekat after. Alright. That is how you choose your month. And the second one is of course you need to put the figures inside our system to declaration ini. So the figure here for you to check your figure is of course you need to to have your record. So dalam record tu pastikan the figure that you need to put here only in the information only for January sahaja. Let's say you are choosing January 2021 and then you are choosing January 2020. Okay, so you already pick a month and then the figure here, you can tengok pada your income statement, you can tengok pada Januari berapa sale dia. You can, you can go to sale or you can go to income. Preferably, I will choose sale because it's easier because in our system does not uh, kekel the negative numbers, dia akan kekel zero to berapa-berapa, dia tak boleh jadi negatif. So, dengan sale, dia tak akan jadi negatif. You can put here, sell you pada Januari. You guys not need to add Februari punya, you guys not need to add March punya, or you guys not need to add April punya. You just focus on Januari, kalau you pilih sini Januari, you just focus on Januari, you put here the figure. What are, what is your sale at that time? What was your sale on that time? Okay. So if you sell is 100,000, then just put here 100,000, which is on January lah. Sama lah dengan sini. Kat sini pun kalau you tengok pada January 2021, you look into yourself on get month, on how many, then you put here 69,500, let's say. This is your sale on get month. Okay? Jangan you tambah pula dengan get month, apa semua tak perlu tambah. You hanya fokus sebagai satu bulan ini saja yang you pilih. Alright? But... In order for you to choose, you must choose at the one that you have operate for 30 days, 30 hari. Kalau tak cukup 30 hari, you operate time. Uh, 30 hari tu termasuklah hari yang bercuti ya, let's say. Because you have 30 hari. Just the one that we want to mention is must be monthly ya. Maknanya cukup bulan tu. Janganlah you pilih bulan yang you operasi 2 hari sahaja. Memang kat sini memang kosong lah. Ataupun kat situ boleh jadi 100,000 orang yang tinggi. Depend on the business. Tetapi kat situ adalah yang paling penting adalah ia mesti sama. So, if you choose January, meaning you operate 30 days. If you choose January 2020, meaning you operate 30 days. Alright? Yang itu Encik yang Adam. paling penting for you. Yeah. Sorry Encik Adam, I have to excuse you at this point of time because we are running out of time. It can we oh, give right, you right. another few more minutes? I have texted you earlier, okay. tapi tak nampak kot. So we need to move on to the Q&A session. Mm -mm. Okay. And to wrap up. So, alright. So, 
ini adalah contoh macam mana you nak buat declaration in terms of recent notification for your employee to know let's say here on the pay slip syarikat hotel ABC merupakan penerima bantuan subsidi upah daripada kerajaan melalui program subsidi upah this is one of the way or maybe you want to put into the memo or you want to put into the notice pemberi pemberitahuan pun boleh tak ada masalah salah satu tak kisah okey tetapi yang paling penting saya ingatkan adalah you Uh, paling waktu sesuai adalah the first, when you receive the first payment of waste subsidy program okay? When you receive the waste subsidy program on, on the first payment baru yang you keluar notice ini Itu adalah waktu paling sesuai Tetapi kalau you nak keluar before get pun tak ada masalah Alright Okay So just like I mentioned to you on how we uh, get we process We depends on the proper basis The most important part is of course you need to update your employees uh, Employee list inside the pocket list and then you need to check to do your research on how, on your employee registration all right and lastly and of course you need to kekalkan semua pekerja mereka yang tersengarai dalam permohonan majikan dibenarkan untuk mengurangkan waktu bekerja ataupun pengurangan gaji selepas berunding dengan pekerja maknanya you have to negotiate with your employee untuk kurangkan waktu bekerja ya dan kurangkan gaji dia Okay, pastikan pekerja setuju kan tak ada masalah for you to do that. Okay, but the main strong reason and the main point, uh, strong point for you to do it is of course you must to, you must follow the Jabatan Buruh punya akta, the peraturan. Okay, dengan gaji minimal. Let's say you want to reduce the gaji, you must reduce the waktu bekerja juga. Okay. Alright, another thing is anything happen during the uh, we receive a complaint from the employee regarding the salary or pembentian pekerja, okay, so berhak untuk menggantung atau menuntut semula bayaran yang telah diterima atau tinggalkan undang-undang boleh diambil, okay? Salah satu lah. And paling penting jangan risau if you are doing the right thing, if the employee come to us and do a complaint about your company, kalau kalau macam yang tadi saya cakap 80% sebenarnya pekerja salah anggap. Okay, so kalau pekerja itu salah anggap, kami akan terangkan dan kami akan terus bayarkan waste subsidi program. Kalau kalau memang salah, kami akan kontak dengan majikan ku dan kami akan keluarkan notice untuk investigate more. Alright. And lastly, of course, if you have any pertanyaan or complaints, you can go to our eaduansip.pekeso.gov.my or you can call us at 8091-5400. This is as I, this is PSU hotline. Okay, all right. I think that's about it. All right. Sorry to take a long time. <laughs> and thank you. And we come back to the moderator, Wan Fauzia. Thank you, Inchi Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you think all of us were taken for a short course by Perkeso on the, every single thing that they have shared with us. Wow, it's just two hours. And I personally feel that we had a crash course today, which will definitely benefit our company. Please look into the criteria, the process, how we can apply, and let's go and apply. The government is giving. Let's let's take and do whatever we can to sustain our business. So before I move on, I would like to share with you that if any question that you have, please, uh, you can see in the screen, we have our phone number and the WhatsApp as well as the email ID being posted. Please take a snapshot. Uh, you can also drop us an email for any question. We will go back to Pakeso if you are not able to answer Lots of questions today in the chat box. We will try to answer as many as we can. And uh, personally, we found the three speakers today were very wonderful. We would like to give them uh, an appreciation. And uh, I don't know if you do agree with me. If you agree with me, should we give them an appreciation in a very short term, a simple where? Just click your reaction button and show me your support for them. Okay, next screen, let's move on. We have an appreciation certificate given to Madam Gayatri Vadiwil 
Thank you so much, Madam, for your support and your knowledge sharing. It's wonderful to have you here for our talk series. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, the next would be the next slide, please. To Encik Muhammad Shazwan bin Abdul Hadi. Thank you so much, Encik Shazwan, for sharing with us the detail on the training, how the employees can benefit from upskilling and reskilling, as well as all the training provider yang na benefit, na apply the procedure. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And the next uh, certification goes to Muhammad Adam Al Nawawi bin Abdul Aziz. And Che Adam, thank you for briefing us for the detailed PSU information on the criteria application, the do and do's. That's the most important thing which we have to apply for the right way in our application form. So without delaying the time, I would like to open the session for Q&A. If any one of you would like to have a question raised, please on your audio and raise the question. Hi, I have a question for Inche Adam. Please introduce yourself yes. and your company Hi, name. Hi, I'm Parvisha here. Hi, Parvisha. All right. Okay, so um, I have actually applied for the Prihatin 4.0 and I got five okay. employees and the application went through, but then I only get the income for one employee. How come? Uh? Get is for the waste subsidy 3.0, is yeah. it? 4.0. Oh, oh, 3.0, sorry. 3.0. Okay. I applied uh, by yeah. It depends on the registration because with subsidy program 3.0, what you need to register your employee before 1st of September. Jadi, uh, if you want to check, uh, better you check because you can go to our e address or maybe call us from the hotline 5400. It's 8091540 for you to check the employee list that are eligible for your waste subsidy. Okay, okay, understand. All right, thank you. All right. Any next question? Uh, hi, my name is Huda. Hi, Huda. Please proceed with your question. Okay, I would like to ask a uh, question. Huda, you are muted. Hold on, eh? uh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, I have applied for PSU 4.0 on last Monday, which is on 2nd August. So I would like to know okay. if, if we apply on 2nd August, um, <coughs> when actually uh, we can expect to get the uh, wish subsidy to transfer to our company account? Okay, if you are, if you are new, Again, it depends on the completion of your application. If you if you have a complete application, it will credit it into your account within 14 working days. All right, 14 hari bekerja. Okay, if you are existing, if you are, have not finished your waste subsidy 3.0 lagi, we will still continue the payment for waste subsidy 3.0. 4.0 hanya kebayar selepas 3.0 habis. Okay, uh, one more one more question. Uh, for PSU two uh, two point zero and PSU three point zero, uh, mm -hmm. we applied uh, previously, but uh, when I check, I cannot see the breakdown for the uh, payment that transferred to our company. But for PSU one point zero, we can see the breakdown. Is it uh because so, so did not update yet the breakdown or how? The breakdown in terms of payment, is it? Yes, correct. Because uh, sometimes we, we we do process it manually from the outside of the system, but we do regularly update into our system. It's just that uh, if you if you want to clarify the payment, please do so call at our number. Then our staff will tell you when is when was the payment and of course on how many we have paid you. Okay, thank you. All right. Mr. Arul, you have a question? <clears throat> yes, uh, good afternoon. Yes. Uh, first of all, thanks, uh, Kel, uh, Chamber, to organize this. I, my question is very simple. One is the EIS, uh, how long does it see? Oh, for example, uh, our company, we had base subsidy for three, six, five months last year. 
Uh, then September, we went on EIS because I'm from a travel agent. The whole industry is crippled. So we are unable to move anything. It's a zero business. So we have uh, okay. put them on an EIS, asked the staff to apply the EIS. So I understand the EIS was six months. And then there was an extension, I believe, from the staff. So is it yeah. six plus three? And is it, does it continue or no more? According to our staff, last month onwards, they were not getting anything. So is there any update on that? I said, uh, it, on, on the Belanja one, on the budget 2020, the, gov, uh, the finance minister have announced to add an additional three months. So let's say the maximum that you can get is actually for six months. But with the additional of the government funded, it will add another three months. But depend on the contribution. Let's say if the contribution, let's, uh, the first con the first loss of employment we will look into is of course from the back of 24 months. So within the 24 months on how the company have contributed for that employee, if you have the full 24 months, then it will become nine benefit, nine months of benefit. If you have 12 back contribution, you will get a six month benefit. It depends on the contribution. So, no, ours is some of the staff more than that. They are about seven years, eight years in the contributing. So, the maximum is only nine months. Yeah, yes. the maximum is only nine months. Okay, even if, for tourism uh, even for tourism industry? Yes, yes. For EIS, uh, the maximum is nine months. But the nine months we, we will, will be expired uh, on 31st of December. Nine months. And... 1st of January 2022, it will go back to six month benefit. So in our case, it started so, off September, October last year. It went on this year okay. until June. So okay. nine months is over until June, I think. So according to the staff, some got it, some yes. did not get it. So last month, July, nobody got it. So that means it's nine months over, I believe. Yeah, it's right? nine months. Okay, the other question I asked. Since the uh, tourism industry okay. badly affected, we are in a zero business. All the staff has been put in EIS layoff. If we want to recruit okay. them back, when the, with the double vaccination, when people start traveling, international borders opening, interstate opening, uh, maybe October we are trying to rec uh, recruit them back. So when the re-employment benefit, does it goes to the new people in the market that we are unemployed, we employ them, we get the re-employment benefit. Let's say our own staff, Last one year, they have not been getting any job. We want to re-employ them back. Is it considered? Yeah, I can answer that, um, Saru. Yes, it can be considered as long as they have a two-month unemployment gap. So for new workers, as long as they're unemployed, like I mentioned earlier, they will be entitled. But if they were your staff previously and they have been unemployed for two months, then they would be also eligible for the hiring process. So minimum two months. And I think even, even eight months, ten months, they are not working. Yeah, yeah. Minimum they are, they are, we can get the employment. Right. Yes, okay. Okay. That, but that from that one also we have to contribute if we have a SOXO for them. Yes. EIS yes. and SOXO yes. for them, right? Yes. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Madam Gayatri, for the hiring um, time lapse that we have in between, earlier you said it's two months then only we can hire them under <coughs> this uh, Panjana new hiring incentive. If we were to have a situation of one month, will there be any consideration? Because someone is so desperately looking for a job and uh, within uh, a month of they left a job, they're able to secure another job. So could that be considered? Because this is something that I, I'm pondering about. Yeah. Um, the reason we have the two months gap is to avoid moral hazards, you know, for people having to just resign for the sake of coming into the system. So that's the rationale behind the two months that we set by the Ministry of Finance. Um, like I said, if as long as they are very, I mean, they are unemployed at any point of time, school leavers, they've been retrenched, then the two months does not apply. Yeah? The two months only applies for those who have self-resigned. Yes, yes. Yeah? So if they're, they're, I mean, they've been retrenched, Yesterday they retrenched and today they are hired under the incentives with another company. The company is able to get the hiring incentives. It is only yeah. when they resign. Yeah, they even when we part. key in the IC number in the salary subsidy portal, it clearly says that yeah. uh, the person has already been given the subsidy previous company. Yeah, yeah. they are not yeah. allowed to. Correct. Yeah. So, thank so you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, Madam Gaitri, with your answer just now, if they are retrenched, in the case of EIS, in our case, it, in, it's sort of a layoff is in retrenched also, the company has uh, retrenched it. Then they apply for EIS and come back. 
So in this case, when we employ back the same personnel, you will be able to get it, no problem. Eh? If, yes, only thing when, if, if, it, if we call it a substitute, yeah? so if you are a substitute within the same company, meaning they've been retrenched with your company and you plan to hire them, they will need that two months gap. Uh, okay. Okay, all right. But they are not entitled to wage subsidy, yeah? it's only the oh, re-employment okay. benefit. You will never only, find yeah? someone on the hiring and the wage subsidy at the same point same. of time. Same, okay. okay. Yeah? Because it's, I'm it's the policy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, Fauzia Rahim, I saw you raising your hand. Would you like to ask a question? Yeah, hi. Uh, Fauzia here from Asia Pack. Uh, I have a question uh, for Nchi Adam. Um, Asia Pack is a new company. Uh, we just started uh, general income in April 2021. Can we apply for PSU 4.0? When was it you registered? Uh, registered uh, per KSO two years back, but we just started our business uh, this year. You registered with so two years back. You, you registered with SSM? Yeah. Uh, yes, also SSM. Uh, last um, year, is it? Two years back. Two, two, years, two ago. years back. But you just operate this time, okay? So yeah. you have the same amount of employee before this? No. All, all uh, employees joined in 2021, January. I see. January 2021. Should be good. But yeah. it depends if you can show it your 30% losses. And of course, the employee is registered before 1st of June. You can apply for waste subsidy program. Oh, okay. All right. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, CJ Kua, you have raised your hand. You have a question. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm from uh, Retail Line Industry. Uh, first of all, thank you to the organizer and thank you to the, all the speakers. Uh, wonderful sessions. I have a question for Mr. Adam. Uh, this is yeah. in regards to the PSU 1.0. Okay. Um, okay. We, we, we did apply and we received part of the payments. Okay. And uh, may I ask, uh, what about the balance of the payment? Uh, uh, is it because of the uh, uh, budget allocated is been finished or, or we actually can claim it back from the subso? Actually, yeah, it, uh, because the way subsidy 1.0 is actually on the first three months, we pay based on the size of the company, which is small, medium, and large. Okay, for small, of course, uh, it was thousand coup per month, uh, thousand coup per per person and per month. So on the fourth month until the sixth month, it's actually the government announced it would, uh, it became six hundred ringgit per person per month. So three months before, it was thousand coup for small enterprise, but three months after which is on the fourth month until the sixth month for all company regardless of the size that uh, is eligible for 600 ringgit so that's why it's half no uh, but uh, we, we do understand uh, the difference of the uh, uh, 1002 to, to 600 we also apply accordingly uh, for the 600 but uh, uh, okay. what i meant is that the payment that we claim the the, the, the amount that we claim did not pay to the company by the so 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 can can we claim it back? Um, yeah, you can claim it back, but let let maybe you can pass it your employer could to me at my email. Okay. And let me check it first. Will if do? you are eligible for this subsidy program 1.0, you are still have not yet received a full payment, yeah, we will pay. Yeah, we do. Uh, we, we for inversion, we also uh applicants for three point zero, and so, so far the payment is good. It's just that the system sometimes does not update. Uh, even though we already yeah. received the payment. Yeah. yeah. So thank you yeah. to so, so yeah. for that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are actually way uh, far from our time that we have planned, and I'm so sorry to keep uh, all these speakers with us. I know you guys have been a very tiring day. Let's have another three more questions, and we already have all your questions in our chat box. We will compile all the questions, and we will answer the question accordingly. Will that be all right with all of you? And uh, who would like to go for the next question? Another three more questions, please. Hi. Hi, Devshi. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what I, I have joined into this uh, company newly, but um, then 
they had um, rejection for PSU 2 and 3. Right. It was denied because uh, what my previous finance, I mean, sorry, uh, the HR exec has, uh, they have compiled 2019 and 2020 um, sales and they showed there wasn't any 30% uh, drop. But when I right. uh, saw Inche Adam's uh, explanation, it was based on month to month. That means 2019, uh, get a month in 2019 and compare it with 2020. That is how it should be done. Then it is, we are, we have dropped more than 50% actually. All so right. can we but, uh, appeal for uh, PSU 2 and 3 now and apply for PSU uh, Okay. All right. Uh, if you are eligible for wage subsidy 2.0 and 3.0 for the declaration of 30%, it should be good. But okay. you must, okay, uh, just to highlight to you, it's actually PSU 4.0, we have a different requirement for the declaration of 30%. Mm. But for the 2.0 and 3.0, is quite uh, discreet rather than PSU 4.0. Okay, mm. for 3.0 and 2.0, you must compare it year to year basis. Meaning oh, okay. that if you choose January, you must choose another January, another year. Okay. Okay. That so, is for but particularly, huh? Sorry. What was that for 2.0 or 4.0? The month. 2.0 3.0. Ah, okay. All right. So yeah. let's say for 2.0 and 3.0, eh, it's mm -hmm. actually when you want to compare year to year basis, you need mm -hmm. to pick in January. Then mm -hmm. you have to pick the same month, January, on the year of last year. Okay. okay? It was mm -hmm. meant to choose year to year basis. Okay. Mm -mm. But, but 4.0, you can uh, but 4 you can choose any particular month in terms mm -hmm. of monthly. If mm -hmm. you choose January, you can choose December. If oh, you choose okay. January, but this is 2021. All right. So they have a different requirement for waste subsidy 2.0 and waste subsidy 4.0. Adam, can I re? I mean, appeal for two point zero and three point zero. Yes, you can go to our our e adwan or maybe you can email it to me. Then I will pass it to the relevant staff. Okay. Uh, how do I get your email address, Inche Adam? All right. <laughs> my my email address, address is already inside the chat box. Let me just write it back in the uh -huh. chat box. Okay. Okay, meanwhile, let's have TK Heeson to proceed with so his much. question. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm Heeson here. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. this is a, yes, yes. This is a question for Punjana Karjai hiring. Okay, so let's say the company is registered with SSM on 2008. But uh, they are just registered for KZO last week, which means uh, just, I mean, after June 2021. So are they eligible for the Panjana hiring uh, incentive? I can answer the question. Um, technically, it's a no because you are registered mm -hmm. with KZO only after first June. But nevertheless, we have an appeal process which you can email to Panjana Kujaya at mm -hmm. my because we want to facilitate as much as possible. Okay. Uh, hello. Thank you. So, any other questions? Uh, the last there? final one. Okay, Hida, last one. Okay. Uh, I was not really understand with Ad, uh, Adam first session about uh, the sales for January 2021. You are calculating at January. Okay, let's see uh, if we counted during PKP. Uh, PKP is uh, May and June, right? We are having PKP. Yeah. So both of the months that we are not having sales. And we are having sales from January, February, March, and then come into PKP uh, month. And then this coming, we do not know how long it would be. So... Uh, <laughs> How do you, I mean, I'm going to apply it because I do not know how to process because just now you did not show the slide of your 
text of your Excel because when you show you just uh, there's no visual so I couldn't understand. So you just uh, nak cakap sale macam mana? Sebab sedangkan memang January ada sale cuma bila bulan uh, sekarang ni lah tak ada sale sejak PKP lah. Okay, alright, alright, understand. Okay, for now PSU 4.0 sekarang actually ia sangat longgar. Alright, dengan sangat longgar aku bermaksudnya sebagai contoh tadi Kuan cakap uh, sekarang tak ada sale tapi Januari ada sale. Okay, so dengan sekarang tak ada sale apa yang saya faham adalah uh, you can choose July on the base, base month, July 2021. You can put your sale on July on berapa. Okay, then you compare it with your January 2021. Kan ku ada sale. So when you compare July now, July 2021 and January 2021 berapa persen dekat situ? Adakah ia mencukupi ke key percent or not? Supposedly most of the time you will have the key percent. Faham tak? Okay ke? Hello? Tak faham, tak faham. Maksudnya contohlah, <laughs> contohnya okay. katalah 20,000 lah contohlah 20,000. So what do you mean uh, total sale okay. is 20,000? So you ambil apa? 30,000 from 20,000 is it? No, no. On on July, let's say uh, your sale, on July, berapa sell you? Tak ada. July 2021. Uh, uh, tak ada. Tak ada kosong. Okay. Uh, kosong kan? Uh, Alright. Kosong. Pada July, you, look, you pilih July as a base year. July 2021 and then you put the figure there, zero. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But on January 2021, You just uh -huh. mentioned to me that you have a figure gap, right? Uh -uh. On the second month. Okay. Uh, jadi kat situ, on January, you just put gap January 2021 and then you look at situ figure berapa sell you? 20,000. 20,000 or 30,000. Okay? So when I'm comparing 30,000 with zero, meaning you are suffering with a loss of 100%. Oh, itu yang saya tak faham. Kan? Nampak <laughs> tak faham. Okay, faham. Uh, okay. So, situ, actually, you can put uh, July, and, uh, July 2021 compared to January 2021. Uh, itulah, saya tak, uh, your yeah, perception. Thank, uh, okay, lagi satu. Your purchase, so, to, during, since PKP, sebab I register masuk ke purchase, so, somewhere in, I think, March ke April. Lepas tu, tiba-tiba dah, purchase dah tutup. Dia tu tu office atau PKP, so saya tak boleh nak deal with your with your, with your staff. So I'm like suffocate tau. Dah lah PKP tak boleh nak um, communicate dengan you all. And then it's very tak tahu dia jawab lambat mungkin work from home. I wouldn't know how to. And then sometimes we need to assist. Uh, we need to learn the assist. Uh, so kita tak tahu nak get all this kind of guidance lah. Uh. Hmm. Thank you. One second, suggest. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. Alright, sorry. Ah, actually, when you go to our website here, uh, our official website, we have a chat box over there. Actually, if you want to ask any kind of question regarding the visa, uh, regarding the okay, so, so hmm. from there, actually, uh, bila you buat chat box tu, ada or ada guess a machine there akan bawa jawab, or nanti akan ada chat yang akan jawab actually in our official website. Okay, so the job got mine yang cool lah. Hmm. Salah satu, yang ada orang, maybe puan gaya je. Oh, sorry. Yeah, if you can just share with us what's your concerns and we can, you know, hmm. you, you can so, uh, tell you whatever uh, materials that you need. Hmm. For example, registration of a company. Uh, all hmm. the materials are actually there on the website. But maybe, uh, you know, not so familiar to navigate. Uh, so you have to help me. Yeah, I, I think yes. our emails are there. Just connect with us and we will connect you to the PIC. Yeah? Hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks. Yeah. All right. Hello. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Tanga Velu from Grand Lotus Travel. Uh, just a, a two quick question. One is the regarding the rehiring incentive. Yes, sir. Yeah, the rehiring incentive uh, for 2.0 and 3.0. The duration of the number of months are they say? Yeah, quantum is same. Six months. Maximum. Six months only. It maximum. is not 12 months, huh? The contract period is 12 months, except uh, for the categories that I mentioned just now, like ex-convicts, OKU, seniors, 50 years and above, 
the contract period has reduced to six months. So the but contract is the contract is uh, twelve months, but the incentive is given for six months. Correct, correct. Okay. But there, yeah. there are a category of uh, I mean a group where the six months contract period can apply if they are OKUs, ex yeah, yeah. vulnerable categories. Yeah. The second question regarding the cursus, uh, the uh, regarding the cursus, uh, is it you have to be registered with HRDF? Uh, should I have contributed to the HRDF? If you want to take the cursus, the 7,000 ringgit or something, which I saw that, do we have to be, uh, the staff has to be registered with HRDF and contributed, contribute to the HRDF? Sazan, you want to take that question? Okay, dan tempoh masa dia adalah eligible seperti mana yang surat yang telah dikeluarkan oleh HRDF lah. And the company must have contribute to HRDF? Must have contributed to HRDF? Asmestinya kena daftar apa ni, contribute to HRDF. At least HRDF kena daftar kan? as a, at least uh, register as a training provider under HRDF. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there, there's some exceptions, so maybe you can share MQA, register, MDEC, and all that. There are some exceptions for uh, registration as well. So, I share MQA is not MQA, if you don't have HRDF, but you register under NIOS, under KSM, under MQA, and under uh, Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi, and also you can uh, register as uh, our training provider. Thank you. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would say we have come to our end of the session. I would like to invite Kellen Slango, Indian Chamber of Commerce Vice President, Mr. Tamil Selvan, to do the closing. Deputy President. Tawara Sultana, sorry, he Deputy President. <laughs> okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a very good participant today. I think we reached at the peak at 203 participants. Uh, I'm sure from that we know this is a wonderful program. And then I think many are longing to know more details about this SOXO and the uh, PSU claims. I think during this pandemic, uh, every company, uh, you know, facing problem paying uh, salary to the staff. So I think this government, uh, I think the very one uh, program that's really beneficial to all our employers and, uh, and then the employees is this PSU and also this Panchana Kerjaya hiring program. Okay, I, I would like to thank uh, the speakers today who gave us a wonderful uh, insight about uh, this, uh, this uh, about uh, three hiring and also uh, PSU uh, 4.0 and additional I think they also gave today about the gig industry where we also can claim claim and also this for training providers who can benefit uh, during this time for upskilling and all that uh, I would like to thank you everybody I think many uh, have left I think they are satisfied with the presentation anyway thank you please participate in more programs of Paul Post Lango Indian Chamber of Commerce we are looking forward to having more programs and then I'm sure there are a lot of uh, questions still not answered. I think all these uh, emails about uh, SOXO, I think is there. I think uh, all of you can refer to that. Special thank to Ms. Gayatri Varivel of SOXO and then Mohamed Zazwan and also uh, Mohamed Adam for giving us a wonderful insight about SOXO benefits. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Way to you, Fauzia. Thank you, and we will officially end the session now. See you until the next program. Thank you, Fauzia.